Rantcast. Hello, welcome to the Rantcast. It's Thursday night. This is Kurgan. Don't have Strange Bus with me tonight, but I do have a special guest, and he's been waiting patiently, pacing back and forth, you know, doing the little shadow boxing stuff. It's Carnegie. Welcome back, frequent uh, Howdy. ranter <laughs> Carnegie. <laughs> With some strong opinions, I hope, tonight, about uh, what we're going to talk about. Oh, I got opinions, all right, and you're going to hear about them. Yeah, they're all wrong, unfortunately, but he is going to express <laughs> them. <laughs> or I might be wrong. Hey, who knows, right? That's what it's about. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, so we are going to talk. Uh, let's get rid of our screens here. Shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. If you're watching us live on Twitch, thanks for tuning in live. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, thanks for supporting us. We appreciate it. Uh, certainly, you can tune in. We haven't quite got to the stage where, yet where we're doing a free like live call-in show, but we're working towards it. So uh, let me just douse the flames here. It's more flames with a clever title, as I often do. It's ogre, I, Anakin. <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> Episode twenty-one. Hopefully, we'll get to some Star Wars and Star Trek. We had a pretty animated discussion on the Hero Quest fans Discord. I was quite impressed. Like, I don't mean to get off topic but i get off topic all the time you guys know me That's just uh, how, i need to how there's, I a, there's a that reminds me of a video that i need to send you oh, yeah. that, that you should watch when this is over okay yeah you can send it to me anytime yeah but uh, yeah so topic wise um we've got the big announcement and i just want to say for anybody this is i'm just going to say this one time because I don't know if people pay attention. You people out there that you know claim to be our fans and everything. Amalgamash. Okay, let me just talk about this guy. I, I got to get a few things off my chest about this guy, okay? You know, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, he's got a new one called AshQuest. You know, he's got a lot of supporters out there. He likes to talk about games. He's a good guy. I think you should support him. I like him a lot. I just pretend to be, you know, jealous of him and like a rival. And like we've got this, you know back and forth but nothing but respect anyway he did beat me to the punch <laughs> with a video so uh within our own ranks we had uh and you know <laughs> i talked to him it's yeah it's just it's funny funny how like people just assume things are happening that aren't but yeah Wordicon, steve rs uh 2000 luca rocks there was like several people that jumped on this all at once there was this update from this uk website uh that that was the visual i was going to pull up uh, it's from Firestorm Gaming. Let me get the link here. About against the Ogre Horde coming back. We knew it was coming back. Um, we've kind of known for a really long time. It's just that having more and more tangible evidence that it's really happening is uh, what we're getting. So that's good to have. But anyway... There was this UK website, yeah, firestormgames.co.uk, and it has a listing for HeroQuest Ogre Horde Quest Pack, uh, 34.84 pounds, um, which is a discount, and then it's March 31st, 2024. So there you go. Before this, all we knew was 2024. People were guessing quarter one. But anyway, it's all over the internet now. And yeah, when he posted that, I was like, oh man. <laughs> but I, I feel like there was another time where I beat him. I, I put up a video, like just the instant I found out about it, it was like, ah, I beat him. <laughs> so, but anyway, the point is the, the community gets it, it gets around. I like the fact that the HeroQuest fans community, like when something happens, doesn't matter where it was originally posted, it eventually gets around to, to us. And if we don't see it somewhere, we're gonna put it where it needs to go. So it's all good. Yeah, what, what what did you think, uh, Carnegie, about the uh, the reveal? What was your reaction? I mean, I guess I wasn't really surprised. We'd had that earlier leak that you know someone had reported of a store that had, I guess, given them a sneak, a look they probably shouldn't have given at you know kind of what the distributorship information had already told them was on the way. Like I think that was when we first learned about the monk, well before. And and at the time, I was a little skeptical that it was real, 
but then it turned out that the monk thing that the person claimed the store had said that they would be receiving turned out to totally be a real product. So. Yeah, so, I mean, think about it, though. Take the devil's advocate position. Um, March 31st. What happens on April 1st? April mm-hmm. Fool's. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, maybe it's an April Fool's joke. But the problem with that theory is it's October 19th when we're finding out about this. And why would yeah. a store put up an April Fool's joke that far in advance for what? For what reason? Just to troll yeah. people in the UK about this? You know, hey, this thing that you think is coming out, we're going to keep this up for, you know, months and months. And then, haha, just I mean, kidding, we fooled you. But also, I mean, how accurate can you even re- realistically expect a projected release date for an officially unannounced product to be like i wouldn't assume that that march 31st is a firm date like that's has to be subject to change you know what if Mm -hmm. avalon hill ends up knocking the release date back by a month or something right like oh yeah the the vendors don't have control over that they're just i mean honestly i'm a little surprised they went public with that so soon but well, my take on that is this. Look at the track record. So they said Path of the Wandering Monk, January 1st. What's the actual date? January 15th. Not too far off. And yes, this is farther <laughs> chronologically than January 1st, but it's probably within the ballpark, I would say. So maybe a little bit in March, late maybe a little bit in April. But unless something significant happens, this is probably pretty accurate. Hey, Strange yeah. Bus, he's here. Yeah, it could be. All right, excellent. The cast is on. Star Wars and Star Trek. I'm missing this. We haven't talked about it yet. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we're having a great night. And Storm and Wolf is here. Evening, lads, he says. Oh, yeah, I don't have the, uh, the fancy text on screen thing going for the rant cast. Let me fix that. Yeah, so I, I think, based on what we've seen so far, it's probably pretty accurate. I don't think this website is trolling us. I don't think Hasbro is trolling their distributors or um, right retailers. I don't think the store operators are working together, you know, Arizona and California. You know, um, I actually called them. I forget who his suggestion was. I'm sorry. Somebody suggested it. Uh, one of our members said, oh, you should just call them again and see what they say. They didn't have any new information. But they were sticking to the story. I mean, they didn't. What are you talking about, Ogre Horde? I never said that. I mean, it wasn't anything like that. You know, like some gotcha reporter. You're like, ha ha, I gotcha. And then, no, just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we just, we still think it's coming out that year. And we'll just let you know when the pre order comes through. Hey, Co- Covert Nerd. Covert Nerd Podcast, everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I was trying to get that uh, that text here. I'm just going to switch over to HeroQuest for a second. We're not doing HeroQuest tonight as a game. We're just talking. But uh, I don't know how else to do this. Yeah, we got some visual aids tonight. I mean, there's some ogres there. Yeah, some, definitely some ogres. I'm I'm gonna. I I don't know if it's if it's actually all that likely that they're gonna put in a reference to this joke or not, but. I'm, I definitely will be a little disappointed if there isn't a brand new artifact in the Avalon Hill version of Ogre Horde called Ogre Slaying Knife. <laughs> oh, for the D&D joke, the Dead Ale Wives yeah. uh, Watchtower. Huh. Yeah. The one that's plus nine versus Ogres. Right. Okay, well, the on-screen text thing is not working. See, this is what happens when Strange Bus doesn't uh, host. He's got all the fancy setup. <laughs> it's never ogre, guys. It's never ogre. <laughs> okay, so this is all we know. Nothing else. So we can end the stream now. This is this is it. We don't have anything about you know the actual contents of the box. The rest of it is all speculation. We're all just going to make our predictions. I watched uh, Malgamash's AshQuest video on YouTube. He made some speculation. He thinks it's going to be one of the smaller boxes. That was his prediction. And my comment comment on that, I mean, we could talk about it. Just a little thing. I mean, it doesn't matter because you could, they could give us a huge box with hardly anything in it. You know, they can give us a small box, pack it with stuff. But you think 
if the price point, I mean, disregarding the, the discount here, I mean, what, what I, we heard originally from the, the store leak was that it'll be a bigger box. How much bigger? I don't know. But so far, they have two expansion sizes that they've given us. The uh, Keller's Keep, Return of the Witch Lord size, and then the uh, the uh, Mage of the Mirror, uh, like the bigger bigger size box. And I'm leaning towards that. I mean, yeah, it could be a completely custom size. But I think um, the main thing is... So there's this uh, there's this tile, and I can show you what it looks like here using uh, yield in as a reference. Let's go here. Just get talking it. about the cave the cave entrance tile. Uh yeah yeah you know what I'm talking about yeah the cave entrance yeah. or the uh, pit of chaos which they would probably change to pit of dread but same idea. Let's get pit of you got to be dumb to run in there. Yeah. Okay. So this this huge tile. Check that out. So we have to account for this, and there's different ways they yep. could overcome this. So uh, it's seven by eight squares, which is not unheard of. Yeah, it covers the central room and the hallways around it, as I recall. Yeah. Like that's how big that tile is. Yeah, so what they could do, so I was just looking at, at what it would look like here. And so, all right. So we've got six squares here. This is the Joe Manganiello one. Six, uh, seven. So that's that's what seven squares looks like in the new size. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like cut it off like right here. And this is the, uh, this is the, Keller's Keep box. So you can see it's almost the exact same size as the box on one side. There's no room for it to really have I mean it the would, like excess around it to punch it out of. Or you could just it like could... just a little yeah, but I mean it's like yeah, and then you're putting it in the box and it's like it's like you know, it might bend and gouge it in there. So or unless it make... came pre Unless it came pre-punched, like it's just one piece yeah, that has a special a slot in the candy tray to fit by yeah, itself. Exactly. They could do that. They could do that with. I mean, they've got uh, Adam Glick there, and he could figure it out. I bet. Put you know small things into big boxes, fit it exactly right. So they could do that, or they could just just use this size, and you'd have plenty of room. You know. Yeah, I I would tend to agree with you. I think it's more likely to be a larger box than. Well, the small box size, but Hasbro has billions of dollars. They could just say, okay, fine. You, you're going to have the, it's going to be like a half an inch bigger and you can have it. Yeah. But true. Whatever. <laughs> There's a couple things. The other thing they could do is they could say, uh, it's, you know, take a page out of advanced hero quest and say like, it's a puzzle piece. Like it just comes apart and the two pieces punch and, in, you know, into one single, they could do that. They could have one that bends, but then you've got the problem of it keeps bending and bending and, you know, yeah. Maybe damage it if it's not very thick. The problem with the old tile is warping, but people were saying, well, you know, it's so thick. This new board is so thick that it's probably not going to warp very much if you store it in the box. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you look at the amount of room that's in these things, it's not a lot. No, it's not. But you can play with a candy tray. So you'd have your, you know, booklet. This is. Even you know, a. I mean, even aside from that tile, I feel like there was a pretty substantial am amount of tiles in Ogre Horde. That's what the Mage of the Mirror Ogre, Horde, or Ogre looks like. And I think Amalgamash is right. I mean, if you probably have this. This guy's probably in there, and then you've got like three other designs. I mean, unless yeah. they decide to go completely off the wall. People were saying, hey, you know, the Ogre Chieftain, instead of just being like a, you know, a copy of the other Ogres, he should be like a big guy, you know, like the Frozen Horror. But, I mean, you could put, you know, a bunch of those in there. And, of course, these, these candy trays can, of course, be changed to whatever size they think they need. But, as you can see, you can fit quite a bit in there. Just like when we were looking at Spirit Queen's Torment and yeah. Prophecy of Telor. So like I mean, it might need to be a little shallower, maybe, to fit the sheer amount. That was what I was about to say. Is that Ogre Horde had more tiles, I think, overall than 
like the punch out sheets were more substantial than Keller's Keep and Witch Lord. Now I just want to say something. This is this is spray painted. This is yeah. not what the original looked like. This was just gray. And this is not black. This is actually dark blue. For people that were wondering, uh, the Mage of the Mirror 1992 ogres were like a light blue, like a really light blue, like kind of a cornflower blue. This is not the exact one. I, I didn't grab it for the video, but it was more like that difference in color. This is a little bit darker than the actual one. This is a 3D print. Yeah. But this mm -hmm. is what it would look like. So camera doesn't do it justice, but it's just like kind of a midnight blue similar to the Wizards of Morcar. And then you had these red ogre warriors. So this is the equivalent of this, but will they use red? Who knows? It'd be really boring I, if they just made these guys blue and then these guys gray, but they could do that. So far, they haven't used red for anything except heroes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, this was... Uh, 1990, and they had no yeah. problem just saying, "Sure, they're red, but they're not good guys." I mean, yeah, I, I'm just have this. You know, they uh, they're kind of chaotic, but I mean, they just yeah. They fight I mean, we've already gives seen them, uh, gives them the most food and the most uh, fighting. Yeah. Mage of the Mirror, I think, actually, yeah, and Frozen Horror, both, right? We've already seen them deviate from just reproducing the color distribution from the the original packs, though, right? Like the the alternate hero sculpts weren't red in the uh, in the original versions. True, they were light blue. Yeah. They were they were the like same the color as the as the miniatures, right? As the as the monsters and stuff. And they went with no, the heroes are red. The monsters get their own color. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the ogres. Red are the same color as the ogres from Mage of the Mirror. Well, now, if they're going uh, going nuts with the transparent miniatures, they could make them transparent red. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they certainly could. I doubt they're going to for something that is net new, so yeah. to speak. Right? Yeah. Like, There's I think the, like tra what, the transparent... They think they're going to do a... what they should do and then what they will do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it feels like the transparent was an attempt to dress up the mythic miniatures so yeah. that they weren't just identical yeah. to stuff that That's mythic ridiculous. backers already had. It was like a Very way to potentially yeah. say say to a mythic owner, you might still want to buy this. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Covert and, Nerd, for stopping by. Sorry we didn't get to your comment right away. Uh, he says, I vote bigger box because of the tiles. Hope they throw in some extra furniture like they did in ElfQuest. Yeah. Well, we have at least, at the very least, the Ogre Throne. The Ogre Throne was just a large, a wider piece of cardboard um, that would fit into a throne, but maybe for the shape of a, an ogre butt. <laughs> One Which, second. if you were like me, wasn't great because Be right back. taking the uh, ahead, cardboard... Keep, keep talking, I just need yeah. to do something. Well, taking the cardboard punch pieces in and out of the furniture the plastic furniture frames tended to fray or uh, like destroy the edges of the cardboard. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure my throne, I eventually glued it in place because I didn't want the cardboard falling apart as I took it, as it came in and out. Um, I guess the good side, the, the kind of the upside of the way that they've done the all molded furniture though for the remake game is if there is an ogre throne it's going to be a distinct piece we're not going to have to worry about sharing components with the uh, base set at all you're saying we sh we should or we shouldn't we won't have to worry about that right because the the remake furniture is all molded as single pieces yeah Right, there's no no like oh you have to pop the cardboard oh, okay. out of the throne frame and yeah, put yeah. The, the ogre throne in it instead like so that's a 3D you know, print printed version of it right obviously to scale with with these guys um, more or less but yeah it's a piece of furniture yeah they they kind of see they kind of keep us guessing because we think oh they did one thing they're of course they're going to do it the next way and then they swerve us and do something different um, which is fine but. Yeah, with the uh, it was the all plastic furniture, and then we got those uh, those mirror bases that were just yeah, like that were the like old doors. The same the same system as the original doors. Yeah, and then they did it again yeah. in Rise of the Dreadmoon. So you know they could they could do that, but yeah, there isn't there isn't anything 
there's a, there's any if... reason to fold a piece of cardboard and do it just for yeah. that. They probably are just going to do something like that. Yeah, I would imagine it's just going to be a piece of plastic, just because that's the. We're going to debate that. <laughs> yeah, I, comes I, out. I mean, I. I mean, I don't know if this was their exact rationale, but I think you could see potentially with the mirrors the idea that they wanted, that they thought that having the art was more important than having it be fully molded plastic. Ah, uh, yeah. Because not right, because you got the trade-off. Right, not everyone's going to paint it. So the question is, okay, do we want it to be a single plastic mirror piece, or do we want, you know, a full-color mirror with the full-color princess on it? I well, wasn't an actual mirror, you know, an actual reflective thing. So, yeah, yeah they, they keep doing stuff that we didn't necessarily expect. I mean, who expected that we were going to have, you know, see-through dice or transparent specters or, yeah, holographic sheet right. and covers. So, so many things could happen. And it's, I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, 90% or more, they've already figured out everything that they're going to do. And I assume... That this time, just like with uh, Mage of the Mirror, they were looking to North American fans like us, um, not necessarily us, you know, individually, but just they were looking for fan feedback on those, both old and new. You know, what were people saying back then? What are people saying now about it? I'm sure by the same token, they, they're looking at European players who actually had this and what people said about it and what people did. Because correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you yourself actually make a, like a tweak or a revamp with I made an I made an adaptation to play it in the North American rules without the um variable body point system. So I, I just kind of looked at the average attributes of the various ogres and said, okay, yeah. standard ogres have this many body points, champions have this much, chieftains have this much, lords have this you know, I just gave them stats. Yeah, so this is um, the original version from 1990. Only recently yeah. released in Europe. And I've only yeah. talked to a, a couple of people. I, Glasgow and I had a, Glasgow Gargoyle and I had a conversation, and his perception was that, yeah, it was positively received. If, if, that, yeah, Ogre Horde. if that's representative. I mean, I've heard some people criticize Wizards of Morkar. I know that there's people on both sides that'll say, oh, yeah, these, these, these expansions suck. They're not very good. You know, Colors Keep was better. But Ogre it Horde, like there's a little bit more goodwill towards this one. There's yeah, Ogre Horde, my, my recollection, right? Because, like, I was, you know, I, I drifted in and out of the old um, scratch boards, and my impression was always that Ogre Horde was looked at pretty fondly. Um, you know, it's a little longer. It doesn't suffer from quite the same sentiment as Wizards of Morkar, where you're like, this entire box just for five quests. Yeah. Well, you know, I it just... At the same time, though, there's it's only a little seven, longer. There's only seven group yeah. quests in Frozen Horror: Mage of the Mirror. Now, those have so many yeah. monsters that they're like two to four times longer than Keller's Keep: Return of the Witchlord, which yeah, those expansions are fairly challenging. And then the '92 American ones were absurd <laughs> on their face. Yeah, this looks oh, yeah. to be about in the middle. But the problem is, I haven't played this with the original rules. So, yeah, the variable body point. So the first ogre, well, I'll just use an example. This will be a little bit of spoilers yeah. here. So, yeah. like, how it would work is, okay, so ogre body points. So the first ogre you meet has one, two, three, and then he's dead, or is has it four? Four. four. It's, it's when, you cro when, you, when you would reach the little one, skull. Two, three. Yeah, because look at, look, at, look at note A below. That one makes it clear. Oh, yeah, it says right there. Three, Three and right. One, two, the skull three. is on the square that, that you have to be about to cross oh. off the square with the skull on it, and that's when they Three die. Points. Okay, so he has four. Okay, I get it now. Yep, so that yeah, ogre so, has four. So I'd have to be using that system. Like, I hate to write on here, but yeah. You yeah. Can, there's this a lot was, of ways you that, can track it, like a, a die or something. That's always been my main criticism of tile back and forth. Ogre Horde in particular, but kind of the EU system in general, was it always felt like the design took an approach that felt patronizing to, to Morkar, where it was like, you can't keep track of any of this stuff unless we give you a place well, to write it down. They're trying to make it easy for you. They're trying to make it easy well, because yeah, these but, are supposed to be like no prep. You just take it out of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's start playing. But on the other hand, then it's like, okay, so I have to 
remember to use pencil and then erase it if I want to play this quest more than once, you know? <laughs> like, what's the quality of this book, though? I mean, it's got a nice, like, shiny cover, and it's... Uh, these pages are... This is not just paper. This is, like, gloss to it. So this is... I mean, it's not as nice as the remake where it's, like, you know, hand-stitched and stuff. It's like, what? <laughs> but yeah. but then they yeah. expect you to just, like, what? Scribble all over the page and then throw it away? Like, is that the deal? <laughs> You know, so yeah, it just like, eh. it just didn't feel it didn't feel good to me. So I was well, like, I'd rather then, then use again, then again, the, the system American... I'm familiar with. Sorry, I'm going to be talking over you all night. Apologies. Yeah, um, I do right. strange about us all the time. Yeah, but then you get you know the American North uh, North American versions of Keller's Keep from the Witch Lord, where you're supposed to take a scissors and cut the back cover apart. Oh yeah, with those cards. Well, they also say you can photocopy, but it's like, oh, you want it black yeah, and but, white, or do you want it color? Right. Yeah, who who doesn't want the actual color prints, right? Yeah, so I want to acknowledge yeah. all our people in the chat here. So Bohemia says all blue is probably. That's his guess about the, the new ogres. Yeah, they could do that. It's a little more boring, but I would take that over most of them being gray. Now, it's true there were some variants out there that were more rare. Like, if you find some gray ogres that are not painted, that they're just gray uh, for the old set, those might be worth something. <laughs> Because this was the default color, and there's were those like these in factory red. prototypes that got out, or did any of those alternate colors actually ship in box sets? I think, I think they did. I think they did. I think okay. the only the only ones that are not uh, retail products are the black ones, the ones that are actually solid black. Those were yeah. I forget those what those were the, like in in house. Yeah, I don't demo know what the official or something. Yeah, I don't know what the official term is. It are they called seconds or they're called betas or. Because they make the yeah. sculptures, and then the, it's like the last one before they actually just produce it, mass produce it. But it's yeah. functionally identical to the one that will be, you know, coming out of the molds. So yeah, it, and and they're not that expensive. But I guess those were just yeah given away at conventions, like at the after Hero Quest was gone, and so now they're collectibles to people like us, like people that paint them don't care, people that uh, want the original colors don't care, so we want them. Yeah. Hey, Wardicon. Uh, hey, Ribby. Uh, Bohemius. We had Covert Nerd here, Covert Nerd Podcast. He and I are going to do a collab one of these days. We got to talk about some more stuff. <laughs> and um, it's just funny how this news just came out. Uh, Luca Rocks is here, Storm and Wolf. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of speculation. But I think, yeah, at the minimum. See, that's the thing. There's the minimum, and then there's whatever they want to do. I mean, they could throw anything into this box, or this bigger yeah. box, and we just would be like, oh, okay, you know? It's like, oh, there's a dice tower in there now. Well, that's cool. Or, oh, there's a, you know, a beanie baby of, of Zargon. That's pretty awesome. Like, nobody expected that, you know? <laughs> but it, it's probably well, going to be something more game-related as opposed to merch. Yeah. I mean, everybody's wondering I mean, about that's... those little heads, you know, those little sprue heads and the PulseCon <laughs> thing. But yeah, there's yeah. only there's only uh, sorry I got to say this there's only seven quests in here but pretty much a Gen Con it was like and Carmine was saying yeah they'd want to buff it out to ten quests so I think that's probably what it's going to be same with Wizards of Morcar I mean he all but yeah. acknowledged that that one's coming too but just it's not going to be one to one unchanged so yeah say what you yeah. say tell me tell me more I, I'd like well I, I was going to ask if you could yeah I think that's a good place to start though is maybe to elaborate on the kind of inside info that you got on what their kind of perception of these was because the the takeaway I had from the way that it was discussed was basically that they I think it seemed like they were kind of on the same page as me where it's sort of like okay the US expansions kind of had a formula it was like okay you got to have you know, new tiles, new monsters, new artifacts, you know, some new evil guy spells that are thematic for wherever the setting of the quest is. Like, there was very much kind of a, you know, I think we, we've seen, we've both seen the design guidelines that were given to the people who were designing the four hero quests. And it was, you know, very much a standard package of you need to do three solo quests, six group quests, and a double quest at the end. You need to do... You know, you have this many cards, you have this much room on your tile sheet, you have... But it seemed like the expectation was that they were supposed to use all of that. Yeah, no point right. for like, efficiency and, like, not using yeah. it. Yeah, it was, it was like, Find you know, use all the card allotment. Like, don't come back and be like, I only needed 10 cards. Like, come up with something to print 20 more cards for. Yeah, 
Yeah, and people were... And... Oh, sorry. Yeah, you, you had more Yeah, no, go ahead. No, um, yeah, I, and, and those draft notes are very interesting to me, too, because you, you're to this day, you still have people saying... I was going to put it stuff back in. You still have people saying, well, there should be a card for every treasury that you find, and there should be a plastic miniature for every named character. And that's never going to happen. Never, ever, ever. No. Ever, ever. But you, as the owner of this stuff or the guy who likes to 3d print or the person who likes to buy miniatures can do that. You can have a unique character. I right? did. And when you make a new <laughs> quest with another new unique character, you make another one. But the thing is, it's like, I see it more as, okay, they gave you eight miniatures. They give you 10 characters. You give you 10 miniatures. There's 12 characters that you, you go beyond what you have. So yeah, rise of the dread moon. They give you all these amazing tiles to use. And then they flood one of the, you know, mazes with water. It's like, okay, but there's no water tile. You just have to use your imagination. You know, Prophecy of Telor, you get a, a big room that has no tile. You still have to use your imagination. And that just less, allows you to go beyond these limitations. Yeah. Because, yeah, eventually the box just is just infinitely large. You know, there's just, there's never enough. You know, you're always going to be buying more things to make that exact, you know, adventure yeah. what it is. Because even though Hero Quest is taking that theater of the mind thing and saying, well, but how cool it is, is it to have these 3D plastic, you know, yeah. uh, pieces and this cool artwork, you know, so it helps kids, even though they've got vivid imaginations, it helps adults. It's like, okay, well, visually I can see where my guy is. All that is useful information when you're playing and it's fun. It feels more like a board game than just charts and graphs yeah. and notes and your mind kind of wanders, you know, Oh, I, I thought the dragon was taller. I didn't know that, you know, like that kind of thing. But yeah, there's, it's like halfway in between. So I get yeah. the fact that they're not going to cover everything. And this expansion, I mean, there's no card for Sinestra. Even in the in the modern version, they could have thrown one more card in for her, but they didn't. Right, yeah. I, I actually always mail, thought it was... There isn't one more card. Yeah. I always thought it was peculiar that the Frozen Horror got a standard monster card, to be honest. I always thought that yeah. was really weird. Fight him one time. Well, eventually, yeah. originally and he, you fought him twice, and, but yeah, they just they wanted to hype him up. They had a space for the card, and so they used it. Yeah, yeah. It's just because you know every other sort of name. You know, I mean, I guess he he has a title rather than a name, per, so to speak. But you know, he's a, a unique. He is a unique entity. He's not like there's not like a class of frozen horrors from which you just happen to fight a certain one. It's like no, no, no. He is the frozen horror. Yeah. He's the same one that you know that. Um, yeah. This isn't Sinestro. Helvinos tried to seal up generations before, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like this, this isn't uh, Sinestra. This is an elven archmage. So, yeah. And it just happens to be just like, uh, just like this is not the witch Lord. This is a chaos warlock, but right. I mean, I think it's the witch Lord. Like, okay. Put a staff in his hand, give him a fancier robe, put him in a chair. Okay, fine. He, it's the same guy, whatever. But yeah, your imagination sure. builds in the details, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, it's there's a, just a lot of but but in one of the drafts they said like okay Sinestra originally had a card and they said nope we're gonna run out so nix that use it for something else right Bohemia says I think they mean to print the last boss for each big box expansion they could or they might not yeah I mean they didn't yeah they when they're making it up from the start they can do whatever they want but I think they are still. Even though I mean, I guess they did. They did for Dread Moon, didn't they? There is a Dread Wraith card. Yeah, and the Dread Wraith kind of has you the fight same. More than one. You fight more than one. Do you? I thought there was only Spoilers. one. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> I just gave it gave it away. You fight more yeah. than one. Yeah. Originally, you think it's just one, but or maybe it maybe it won't be. I mean, we're playing that campaign, so. Yeah. Uh, just... But it, but sure. in general, it feels like they went a little more with the Sinestra route, where it's like the There's the figure, one. the figure is officially identified with a generic name, but then there's like the character, you know, the the figure is used to represent a specific character in the official quest pack. Yeah. Um, but but I guess what my, my overall point though, right, is that it felt like more maybe that the the U, the EU process seems to have been a little more ad hoc like they just kind of came up with an idea and threw whatever they came up with in a box and the u.s approach seems to have been 
there's a certain amount of content that we think our customers are going to expect to get out of the box. So like even with the, you know, sort of the lower effort expansions, the ones that they converted directly from the EU versions, they were like, they're not enough as is. We have to add artifacts. We have to add mm -hmm. alchemist shops. Like they, they were like, these things don't bring enough new sparkle to the play experience. Actually, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if I ever noticed that these quest books are like bound with string and not just staples. <laughs> yeah, well, staples eventually rust, as anybody who yeah. owns these knows eventually. Um, yep. I want you to notice something here. I mean, everything's a little bit bigger with these sets except for the furniture, but uh, I want you to take a look. This is a stack of 15 cards. That's how much room that takes up. And this is a stack of 15 tokens. Look at the difference. Look at the savings. <laughs> Imagine the savings. <laughs> you have uh, an opinion about this, don't you? And I want to hear it. These are the spell tokens, the chaos spell yep. tokens from this. The first time we had non one-off abilities for the bad guys. And what, what would you say about this system? So, I mean, what I think was happening, right, is the EU game development side was catching up a little bit to and eventually made the same decision that the US bosses made right away which was well the bad guys need their own spell cards cuz this came um, out the same year as the American game system right and what you see in those early quests is you know obviously a lot of the quests are the same quests, so they still have kind of sorcerer type enemies in them. Mm -hmm. Like what, you know, look at like the Fire Mage, and you know, there's gonna be some spoilers here. <laughs> the Fire Mage quest in the game system. In the EU version, the wizard didn't get to use fire spells that quest. The Chaos Enemy gets gets that set of spells instead. Yep. So the wizard's and it's like in. The wizard's like, well, where did my fire spells go? And in the U.S. version, they were able to say, no, he's got his own spells. You know, he's got his own version of Ball of Flame. The wizard can still carry his normal arsenal. See, why didn't they just say he's got he's got those three spells, and then so the wizard just looks at his own. Oh yeah, he's got Ball yeah, of Flame as it, well. Cross it off on a piece of paper. And I mean, again, I think this comes back to the the EU that feeling, and you know, like you know, it's it's my impression. I can't necessarily say it's. 100% correct or what they were actually thinking, but it really does feel like those quests are designed assuming that the kids playing are really not capable of tracking stuff without physical tokens in front of them. You know, like... Age nine. Well, you know, so it's like, oh, well, we can't just use the same card twice. If the person's going to use the spell, they have to have the card, and it's like, okay, well, is that really true? I mean, yeah, it would be easy to just give it to both, but yeah. that's not how they wrote... That's not how they wrote the notes. Why don't you have multiple copies of the same spell card? Like, so would you would you say so? There's uh, four of them here. Would you say that they're going to get rid of this completely, and they're just going to give us four cards? I think they will personally, because right, because in the if I remember right, the the European rules don't really have cast a spell as part of the standard rules for monsters. It's just like a note. Like a Whereas the U.S. rules did. They basically said, hey, if the monster has been allocated a spell, a spell, one of the two actions it can choose to take on its turn is to cast a spell from a spell card. And, you know, that's in the rule book that you pull out of the game box when you buy the main, you know, the game system. So I suspect they don't, that they're not going to want to override that, right? That every U.S. expansion just added on to that system by just saying, here's, you know, more cards with the same spell card back on them. You can throw them all into the same pool for your homebrew if you want to. You know, you can, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, right, you could write up a homebrew quest where some chaos spellcaster has, like, some spells from the game system, some spells from Mage of the Mirror, some spells from Frozen Horror. You could mix them all. They all have, they're all the same kind of spell. Mm -hmm. And they all use the same mechanic, which has been around since the game system that you bought in the store. And I just don't think that something as core as, like, what does something do on its turn? Oh, 
these are is something that they're going to want to introduce competing mechanics for. I could be wrong. These are wizards and warriors. Um, I just realized I have them in the wrong bag. <laughs> these are the wall yeah, pieces. It, yeah, well, I, I mean, I could be wrong, certainly, but I just you suspect are. You are that they will <laughs> opt to say, why not just convert them to dread spells? Right, because I mean, we already saw in Rise of the Dread Moon that they're not shying away from saying you may have to use the same dread spell card as a reference lots of times in the same quest. Right, we're gonna you know have a quest with six dread cultists in it. You know, like you might be casting Channel Dread six times, and they said you can handle it. Like. You, we're only going to give you the one channel dread card, and we're just going to assume that you can keep track of which monsters have cast it and which ones haven't. Yeah. Well, so I tend to think that they're going to convert to that system, and okay. that you know they also have the problem they may need to the the effects of the spells in Ogre Horde, as I recall, some of them are a little more convoluted. Then I remember I had trouble. I tried to do that in my conversion was convert them into chaos spells. And I had trouble trying to keep the spells self-contained on a, on a card. Like the text wouldn't fit. Hmm. Because some of the spell, some of the spell information is in the quest book. It's not on the token. I see. And I ended up having to do the same thing. I had to have like notes in the quest book that said, this is what happens when you use this spell. <laughs> yeah. And there's also the fact that one of the spells has the same name as a spell they've already released. Mm -hmm. uh, not that one. I think it's uh, Mind Blast, if I remember right. Yeah, Mind Blast is from uh, Frozen Horror. Right, and so I know you've said, hey, you you know, people are smart, they'll be able to tell them apart, but... Are you ready for me to it rip just, all of your points apart? Yeah, yeah, it just feels like the sort of unforced error to me that I don't think they want to make. Like, we've already seen them, they renamed one of the potions, didn't they? Because someone pointed out that there were two potions with the same names. They were like, sure, we'll slap a superior in front of one of them. Yeah, fans have done that for years, too. Right, and so I, I suspect they're going to do the same thing here, where even if they print the same spell or something thematically very equivalent, that they might give it a tweaked name so that it's not just like, well, wait, if it says this thing can cast Mind Blast, which Mind Blast do they mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and I'm glad uh, we're airing all this stuff, because you're not the first person who suggested these things. Yeah. And I've had some of these same thoughts myself. And it sounds like you were thinking about this way back in the 90s, where whereas I didn't even know this thing existed probably until like 2002. And I didn't own my own copy until maybe like two years ago. I forget now exactly. It seems like not that long ago I got it from Board Game Geek, but it's not something I grew up playing. But I want to respond to some of those things. And I'm sure Avalon Hill's already made their decision. <laughs> Whatever it is, we don't know. But they've already made yeah, the decision, I mean it, and they've already it, considered these issues, and they've come down on maybe one side or the other, or maybe a third option we haven't thought of. Absolutely. Right. But yeah, I mean, I think if, if this thing is supposed to come out in the spring of next year, mm -hmm. I would imagine the design has probably been locked for a while, and they've already moved into the, like, making sure that all the right. stuff is set up for fabrication and mm -hmm. packaging and shipping. Like, they're in the fulfillment stage now. They're not in the, yeah. like, deciding what's going in the box yeah they can correct this stuff digitally at the last minute but yeah they're, it's probably fixed well <clears throat> i'm going to respond to in no particular order some of the things you've said not to say that you know oh i think you're an idiot and you're wrong and all this even though i jokingly said yes you are <laughs> no you're not um obviously you put a lot of thought in this and so have they and so have other fans and i'm sure if there's like a if there's like a large percentage of EU fans are saying the same thing you're saying, they'll probably go in that direction. I mean, unless they think it's absolutely stupid and it's not going to sell, they're probably going to go in that direction. So I was looking at just quest one. Look at all this wasted space. 
look at all this extra. Like, are you supposed to write notes there? So to me, whether they use this system or some other system, there's plenty of room for them to put extra explanation here if they wanted to. So I don't see any issue with each quest having detailed notes. I mean, there are North American okay. quests yeah. where there's a second page of notes. And that gets a little yeah, annoying. I mean, it's nice to have it all together. So there's that. That's the good thing. point, though, if I can cut in for a sec. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I hadn't thought of that, right? But if you look at the first official stuff that they've produced that's brand new, they pretty much used all the real estate on every page. Now, you know, is, yeah, every, every single one of these quests, I'm, I'm just flipping is, through the quest book for Dread Moon, has but look how every cool. quest in, yeah, every quest in Dread Moon has a full page of notes. They could put more in. I mean, yeah, if you look at the, if you look at the remake stuff, they're throwing artwork everywhere. They're trying to like dress up all that empty space because it really is fairly simple. And those types of quests are better, I think, a lot in a lot of ways because Zargon can read this over like pretty quick, like even right before the quest begins, even though he shouldn't be required to do a lot of prep, but he can, and he could go, eh, you know what? That's pretty cool, but I think I'm going to add a little sentence of my own little stuff there to make it more interesting, you know? Or, eh, I'm going to cross that out and write a little note here. I mean, he could, if he wanted to. So, there's that. If it, They don't have to fill every nook and cranny. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is um, the idea of flipping back and forth like when I started watching some of these other YouTube channels, people talking about stuff like with the Frozen Horror, where like the first time you get one of these tiles, it gives you a detailed explanation of what, you know, the, the deadly crevice does. But then the next time you see it in a quest, it's like, oh, yeah, refer back to quest four or whatever. So you're like flipping back. What was it again? Uh, oh, OK. And then you flip back. It's like that's kind of annoying. That's one of the things I corrected in my remix yeah, just is I and paste. put... Yeah. I put the full description of the effect in every quest in which the thing appeared. Yeah. Now, I occasionally get messages from people either who are EU players or who tell me that I don't know anything about the EU game, which is true. I ba barely know it. I own it, but I've never played through it to like really feel like I'm really uh, familiar with it. I usually have to remind myself oh, what, what happens in this version versus some other one. They're saying, well, you don't have to play these quests in order. There's no numbers here. Do you see a number? There's no number. I mean, they encourage you to do that because they tend to increase in difficulty. But who's to say you couldn't just start on the fourth one and go to five and then one? Mm -hmm. and... But if you're I doing mean, that, you're might be missing would... stuff chronologically. They're like they I mean, these on quests or... actually kind of feel like they flow in a storyline. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I would say okay, that it makes these... sense to do these these particular ones but people say like right. well keller's keep you know why couldn't you play those out of order but yeah i i think you, in the north american ones they, they, they give you could. A, yeah they give you enough they give you numbers and they say no play one to the next the japanese yes. version they say well if you think this quest is too hard you can skip it go to the yeah. next one it's like well that's not one that one's not going to be any easier but yeah it's kind of like uh yeah there's different ogre ways horde, to play the game ogre horde very definitely has like each the quest notes very clearly are telling a story of like oh you're you're outside now you're finding your way in now you're deep inside now you're at like the lord's lair now you have to fight your way back out so playing them in a random order <laughs> the quest prompts i mean mechanically you could totally do it but the quest prompts would make no sense whatsoever <laughs> chaos what chaos yeah dread you know uh, for sure is a line for printing. Token or just as equivalent. Oh, Bohemius is talking about. Yeah. So, again, to reemphasize the point, um, I don't have the boxes for these original ones. They were like cereal boxes. A lot of those got thrown away. But um, am I missing some tokens? Or oh, there's there's more of some than there are of others. Yeah, because for some of these, it's like that's how many turns the, the spell lasts and other ones it's that's how many instances of the spell you have so it varies could you simulate right, that on yeah. a card that, without having multiple that, cards that's a trickier one right because yeah one of them is like they it the token is used as a duration counter rather than mm -hmm. 
Because if yeah, I was so, that guy, I'd be like, okay, um, I have this spell. I wonder if I should use it. So I'm like looking at it. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll what, try to use this. What they certainly could do is have a spell card that explains how the spell works and then just have small uh, square tokens you that go. you can use as counters. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, just kind of like the, uh, the, the uh, Wandering Monk. You know, you've got this card that shows you how to use your abilities. Then you've got the actual abilities that you can whip out and, and use. Mm -hmm. A little reference card. Yeah, there's different ways to do it. I When they did the remake and they had just a standard size card for the hero and then a, an additional card that tells your actions instead of having a tile that you flip over, it's kind of like, this is silly. But I could also see, you know, you just have them laying next to each other and you go, oh, if I need a reminder, here it is. I can look at it, lay it down. Yeah, there's there's so many different things. I regarding the counters, I want to say this about that. So, Rise of the Dread Moon and Carmine said this over and over that yes, it was them wanting to kind of flex their creative muscle and create a, a brand new adventure, entice people with you know something brand new. But they were also wanting to implement all this fan feedback that they'd been getting about things that right. people wanted and putting it in there. And one of the ones that I remember hearing about like ever since I became part of the online community. So I'm thinking like 2010s, late 2010s is, well, you're underground. So you shouldn't be able to shop at the shops in between. So they take that out, but yep. then you're faced with, them. Oh shoot, I need to buy stuff and I can't do it. And I've just got, I'm overflowing with gold. So they put the hideout mechanic where it's like, okay, mid quest. Oh, I found the place where I can buy stuff now. And maybe not, I, I can't buy everything, but I can buy a lot of the stuff that I need. I can heal a little bit, not completely, but so they come they come up with a way to kind of fit it in. Even though the way, I, I mean, spoilers for Rise of the Treadmoon, is that there's these invisible people that you never see that are like, oh yeah, I'll trade you this, or I'll give you this, or I left these things for you. It's like, well, where are they? Like, are there figures for them? No. At best, there's just a little token that just shows a little face on it that you could put there, but is not required. They're like invisible. But maybe it's a little bit extra lore for those who want to feel like there's some realism there. You know, you just you run into somebody in the middle of a tunnel and they just give you something and they happen to have the exact thing that you needed in exchange for the exact amount of gold that you had. And you're a good guy, so you're not going to just murder them and take their whole supply, right? Because you're a good guy. So it's like, all right, sure. But I, I have no problem, like, in the midst of these quests, just, like, you're just shopping now. It's like, whatever, you know, it's just a game. But I, I see how they took that fan feedback and put it in. So with this, when they're saying play it as a series, it kind of sounds odd to us. Because it's like, well, of course you play them as a series. What do you mean? You like you play one quest here, and then you throw this down and go play a World, a yeah. World of Warcar, and you throw that one away, and then you go play some Keller's Keep. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not mean, used to doing it any other one, way. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds odd, but what they're saying is your mind points come back automatically. You get your body points back as well, but you just can't buy stuff in between. And they also are saying that you can get these large healing potions. They're not represented by anything. They're just, you just write them down. So when I first started, I was playing like a North American conversion. I was playing, trying to play Phoenix's version. We only got like four quests in, but it was just like big potion, you know, and it just, you know, he had like hash marks for each one. It's like, okay, use that one up, cross it out, lose that one, cross it out. But it gives you all your body points back. Those are not meant to be used in between quests to heal you. They're just any time. Keeping in I mind, may have just thrown those out. You may have, yeah. In my conversion. I don't think I... Yeah, I'm you're... looking at my notes. You I just only... didn't give them to the party at all. You only get them if you're playing it as a series, which that makes yeah. it sound like everybody gets them automatically. So whether they're going to actually give those to you or not, I don't know. But I was thinking, oh, they could just give you a token. Say, here's potion yeah. one, here's potion two, three, four, five, and they could put a lot of them. Because I would have thought tokens are not hero quest hero quest is tiles cards pieces dice you know board but then we got rise of the dread moon where we got tons of tokens i mean you do not need a lunar charm why would you need that that's just it's just a fun little thing to say oh mm -hmm. you next time you walk up to a uh you know a bench you can cash that in and get healed and that helps you remember that yeah. you used it 
that helps Zargon because with some of these adventures, I'll I'll be honest with you, like you've got like 20, 30 potions per hero, and I'm trying to keep track of all that stuff to keep everybody honest, and they're kind of keep me honest, and it's like, oh man, that's a lot. That's a lot to manage, and I'm a grown up. So <laughs> if you're nine years old and trying to play this, it's like, okay, that's a little bit. That's a little bit of help. That's a little bit good. Oh, I got to glue that down. Um, yeah, I'm, so, yeah. So, so I'm gonna be. I'm a fun, fun thing. I'm sure I'm gonna get. Hey, drag and drop some adjustments you. that I'm going to have to make when my uh, kids are old enough that I get to start playing this with them because I'm used to, I've years and years of playing this with nobody but adults. <laughs> so it's yeah. sort of Yeah, I can't uh use those uh profane words every time they they roll three skulls or whatever. Well, also <laughs> just like, like you say, you know, adjusting expectations on Yeah. Are they going to remember to scratch the potion off their sheet every time I'll they use sure it? You like turn that card over. You've used it up now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and like, <laughs> yeah, there's just so many different things. Um, yeah. Okay. But to your me... point, yeah, if if they keep that, I mean, I it's like I said, yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, I, I'm actually I opened up my uh, the PDF of my my adaptation, and yeah, I don't have anything. There's no there's no prep text in my version. I just you I assume that that I assume assume that Zargon knows how to play. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, all of these expansions basically are just, they tell you, you know, you should have played at least some of the game system quests, if not all of them, you know, refer back to right. those. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I was like, they don't need health potions. They're going to be loaded with potions from the whatever quest pack they just played. Yeah. Well, there's something to realize about this, though. All of, I mean, us hardcore fans who want to collect everything and play everything in a specific intended order you know that we found on on twitter or x you know uh we are i don't think necessarily the majority of their fan base so they can't assume that you own any other expansions except for the one that you just bought so yep. to me it should be as self-contained as possible with the game system now mm -hmm. that rule of thumb was violated by the barbarian and elf quest packs because the original idea was back in 92 they were going to give you four of those and you were you were going to encourage everyone to buy all four and put them together didn't pan out but the idea would be yeah you, you go to one alchemist shop and there's three potions that are only for that one hero and then there's one for everybody else it's like well that doesn't seem fair well you buy the other ones so that now you have everybody gets their own special potions they can be looking at and buying and then you've got the general potions that people can get. It's kind of convoluted. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, it's it's kind of like when they reissue this stuff and it's like, okay, they'll put in the cards that you need, even if it's a duplicate, if you happen to have some other one. So, you know, you get more. I don't think that's a problem. And I think people that complain about it are maybe just being a little bit too nitpicky because generally speaking, like if you if you buy Keller's Keep, you'd be like like wait a minute what like how come how come there's more orcs in here i don't want these i already have these guys why are there orcs in here get rid of these guys no you'd be like oh great i've got more orcs now i can make this quest that has even more bad guys in it or whatever oh more doors yes you know you're gonna find a use for them so okay yeah maybe you want more original things but nothing's gonna go to waste and if you have more of the same card guess what that means that when you do a random card draw, you've got more possibilities. Oh, maybe there's a greater chance I'll get Courage, but there's a less chance that I'll get a Magical Throwing Dagger. You know, whatever system you come up with. I guess that was wrong because Spell Scrolls are the only yeah. random draws, but you get what I'm trying to say. Like, you can come up with uses for those things. I think the only yeah. time maybe it makes uh, sense as a wine is, well, you there was something else that you really wanted that now there's no room in the box for that one thing that you wanted because there was an extra thing that was just useless whatever um but back to the tokens <laughs> back to the tokens so you don't need the lunar charms you don't need the reputation tokens either why, why do you need that you could just write it down on a piece of paper just oh, write got, it down i've got five yeah. of them oh i cash one in okay now i've got four but they wanted to give you a pretty little token that you could keep and it makes it easier to remember okay i've got i've got three of these in my hand oh oh i gotta cash one in oh i've only got two now you know by my spot at the table because I feel like as you play this game, you get like these piles and piles of cards. And yeah, people like to have cards, 
but your spot gets messy and your character sheet gets full of stuff and it i don't know it, it making it a little bit easier for you to come up with your own system to manage your stuff while you're playing i think is a good thing mm -hmm. maybe some players won't need it oh i've i've I, I memorized exactly how many times i've used that spell okay but if there's any if there's any question i can look at your spot and go okay yeah you you forgot to turn the card to the side or you forgot to give me that token. You know, mistakes happen. Yeah. I want to acknowledge... I mean, but, yeah, we're going to have to see how much free space they have, right? You know, because they're going to try to economize the tile sheets. Yeah, but I really you know, think... So it's sort of how much space are they going to have to throw in some of those more luxury things? Because, yeah. you know, the, the various a, room overlays are mandatory, right? We know us, that those are going to be there. If they give us this size, there's going to be lots of filler filler in this box. So I'm no, thinking they, sure. could have, they could have extra ogres. They could have, you know, fancy things. They could have extra tokens, you know, maybe for the potions. There's lots of stuff. If it's this, it's going to be really tight. So, yeah. But I'm thinking, why yeah. would you pay $45 for this? And then you'd be like, well, why is it only $35 for this other one? It's like the box is just crammed that full. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be this. And there's going to be extra. And I think that's what Encarmine was talking about. He's not necessarily saying, well, we want to live up to the standard of 1992. He's saying we want to live up to this standard right here. They started with Frozen Horror, where they not only gave you everything that you were expecting, but they also gave you extra things. They gave you something something you didn't know you wanted until it was there. Right. Right, and it was just a happy coincidence that they gave us 12 uh, mercenaries instead of just six because the quests are actually that hard. But they did it because they wanted to have the individual designs and they weren't using the bolt-on weapons like the old one was. The other fun thing is that they inadvertently gave you the ability to run Dark Company. Yeah. Like, there's basically just enough mercs that you can Back pretty up. much get away with it. Well, I don't, I don't think... If I remember correctly, you don't face more than like five at a time in a room. So yeah, I mean, I think in theory, theory right? You could do it. In theory, you could have deployed. Mm -hmm. There's some some minor limitations on their weapon loadouts that the Morkar, original wouldn't have had, but yeah, because Morkar could say, "Oh, yeah, it's a room full of guys, and you know, four, they're all swordsmen. Four of them are swordsmen, and one of them is a crossbowman." Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do that. But yeah, but you've got more than enough figures to actually place them Even and not though, expect to run out. Even though Morkar can do this, he can say, see this guy right here? That's a crossbowman. I know it looks like he's holding a halberd, but that's a crossbowman. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. Like, he can do that. But yeah, it's I'm nice pretty... if you actually have I... the figure that you're talking about visually so people don't go, wait a minute, what? What? Yeah. Which, which enemy is that again? <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a little piece of paper next to him so that you can know that that's the one that doesn't really look like what it shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I and that's one thing, right, that occurred to me while we were talking in terms of, you know, things that we might not know or expect, you know, something that they could catch us by surprise. They Ogre will. Horde is where they started writing in monsters with ranged weapons or diagonal attacks. Mm -hmm. Was that the very first time? I believe so. All right. Like after so that they'll have it, you know, they'll have a look that up to see if you're yeah. Right. So like you'd have you'd have a room kind of bleeds together in my mind. You know, you'd have a room where there'd be a note in that room, and it'd be like all the orcs in this room have long swords. Yep. You know, and but in particular, I think with when they give the monsters ranged weapons that they don't normally have, that could be a thing to surprise us. Is oh wow, we got orc you know orc bow. and goblin figures holding bows. You know, it would be a cool little extra that they could throw in that yeah. again you doesn't make or, doesn't make or break the ability to run it. But you don't need it. But yet. it's a cool little thing, and it would be great for homebrew because I think people love to give monsters ranged weapons in their homebrew and having figures that drive home to the heroes. You know, like okay, we got to worry about those guys because they don't have to close with us. Right. It can just trick you into traps and things, or even just a reminder that it's a thing you can do. Yeah. You know, like I think sometimes you can get sucked in when you're when you're just working on stuff by yourself. You get sucked into confining yourself to the things you already know exist, and you don't think to improvise. And yeah, you may you may be right. You may be right about that. I I was thinking that there was some type of ranged attack in uh, Keller's Keep, but I guess I'm wrong about that. 
Um, I don't not not the way that they did it here. I don't think because it's in most of the quests. I think if not all of them have some room somewhere. Yeah, not all of them, but several of them. Okay, let me let me address some of the other things. But first, before I do that, I do want to look at the chat. So I'm I'm sorry for ignoring people in the chat here. Uh, Gravendale Games says you mean Zargon. Yeah, I'm I was using Morkar, the original name of the bad guy, when I was talking about the European one. Grim Dead for Japanese. Um, yeah. So going back, Bohemia says as kids, the basic quest we used to pick them at random. Rarely we play them in order. Otherwise, we always play the first quest over and over because we have different friends over. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know I the that. trial by heart. Like, I could probably lay out the trial without the quest book. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trial by fire for sure. And, yeah, a lot. Of, we had a lot of total party kills on the trial, believe it or not, uh, with the North American rules. One of, one of my favorites was when some group I was playing with for the first time the elf just decided he wanted to pass through rock into the central room. Yep. <laughs> From like the non door side. So now he has a fight on his hands, a big fight. <laughs> he's got two chaos warrior, or it's like a chaos warrior, a gargoyle, and two orcs, and he's trapped in a room, and the other heroes can't get there for like three turns. I tried one time playing the. That's that's fun. I tried playing the the trial not as the first quest one time. I I still kind of feel like it. You know, just for old time's yeah. sake, I do it. But yeah, playing, it's like, well, if you beat this one, you become a champion. And I beefed it up. I looked at the European version and the American version, and I kind of like changed the room so that it was like the maximum monsters that you would ever face. And it was just like, yeah, it yeah. was really tough. I mean, my my remix of the game system, actually, this I've never, I've never actually, I haven't run it yet since I cooked this stuff up. Um, because I've had a lot going on in my life, but sure. for the first time, I decided I would move it. So I actually have trial as quest four in my setup. Um, with oh, I although it's that. not it's not a hundred percent the same. Like you know, the original trial is like you can tell the heroes there's no traps in this quest because it's an introductory thing. It's like no, mine has traps because pull now it's hazard. quest four. Pull the hazard <laughs> cards out of the treasure deck. I re I did that. Because it's like, yeah. oh, you didn't, I didn't say traps, but I something just like yeah. a trap. It's like I searched for traps. How come? It's like well, I never, it happens. never even occurred to me to do that. Yeah, I got one <laughs> big complaint one time. I'm like, yeah, I think I'll, I'll remember that next time. One point I want to yeah. make: the difference between children playing and adults playing. So, and this is just going back to the game system. So we've got the rescue of Sir Ragnar. You kill all the monsters. There's no monsters left in the... In and the then monster. an alarm goes off. Then you find Sir Ragnar, the alarm goes off, no one comes to the alarm, and you just slowly march him out of the quest. Now compare that to the way the companion app handles it. As soon as Sir Ragnar hits the stairs, the quest is over, you have won, here's your reward. I'm like, what? That's not how you do it. You, you get him to the stairs, and then the rest of the heroes take their time looting the rest of the dungeon. Getting the maximum sure. treasure, and then triumphantly marching back that's how you do it the thing is a lot of adults don't want they want to end it they're like oh we've been playing for an hour oh man i can barely concentrate i got to get back on my phone and see what's happening on social media it's like dude <laughs> we're playing a board game please people have different attention spans usually you think kids oh they can't sit still they can't focus when i'm playing that quest like we loved it we're like yes we did it. Now let's get the last bit of that treasure. Let's get 100% completion. Let's get out of here. And then when you do Prince Magnus's gold and you're carrying those chests, like you're rolling Everyone one die. Everyone just wants to get out. You're rolling one die to as kids, we we didn't mind. Like you had the you had the figures, and unfortunately I didn't grab the treasure chest, but the way the the classic treasure chests are designed, you could just like hang them right on the weapon and it would just like balance so you just be like, oh, look, I'm carrying the chest, you know, out the door. And you're just like, it's like a victory lap. Like, you just had these hard quests, and now you've got an easy one where you're just carrying that treasure to the end. Like, oh, man, I'm going to have all this gold. It's going to be great. We're going to buy all kinds of stuff, you know. Whereas adults are like, yeah. oh, just just say the quest is over. Like, it's going to take us 12 rolls to get there. Just say it's over. Like, okay, well, whatever. and I mean, I adopted as one of my house rules the the unthreatened movement 
yeah, thing the play that, test rule that Avalon Hill uses. suggested, which speeds things up a lot, where it's just like you just get to roll fours on your movement dice. Yeah, I I do it even more extreme than that, uh, is to just say, yeah, you can move twelve if you normally would roll two dice, or six if you roll one. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna blunder into traps anyway. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I do say, you can't take that option if you plan to open a door, so. Okay. Yeah, um, one suggestion. Basically, that... so that you can't just sit outside a door and be like, I'm going to get eight squares of movement this turn, so I can guarantee that I can open the door and then reach the monster I want to attack. It's like, no, no, no. If, you, if you're going to be going into, <laughs> if you're going to go into combat, you got to roll. I liked his bizarre suggestion, which was to say, you do that, you get your full movement. But then, if a monster is spotted anywhere, you got to roll the dice and then subtract from what you just rolled, uh, from what you had. So, from there on, you got to do it. So you might have rolled too much already, and you just have to stop. Mm. Now, one thing that when you're just rolling and rolling and rolling and moving, if you're using some of these, like some evil wizard, you know, every time it's Zargon's turn, there's no monsters. I'll just draw another one yep. and see what. Oh, something bad happened. Uh oh, you know. And so then you're like, okay, come on, hurry up, you know. Even though it doesn't matter, it's based on turns. It's like, oh man, gotta where get a good you roll. get that? Uh, where'd you get that back image for those? Back image? Oh, on yeah, the back of the cards. Yield in. Oh, I don't remember. I yeah. that wasn't the back that I remember from the card. This is the, just, it. Just the... colored red. That's that's the only difference. Yeah. But no, no, the other side, the Zargon side, like like the back oh, of the card. Okay. Yeah, I just had a white border, and it said uh, Evil Wizard, and I just changed it to Zargon. Got rid oh, of you just border. changed it to Zargon. Was that already the image that was being used? Yeah, that's the image from the uh, GM screen. Right, I, yeah, I just I didn't remember that being in part of the, the yeah. collection well, of cards. There's, there's different versions. So, well, no, these, yeah. these are these are homebrews. Right. Yeah, which I, I'm trying to make Shang, my own, Shang and I'm like, these, ooh, I like, like I'm just, Odanin I'm like, I want your like, image. I want to steal it. Like, well, I, I can look for it. It's it's on a flash drive. Uh, but yeah. yeah uh, um, I think Shang did the original ones, and they were based on the alien event cards from Space Crusade or Starquest. And then, yeah, I've seen I've Odanin, seen Shangs. Yeah, Odanin did his own version of it, and somebody else did another variation. So there's like four or five different versions of the evil wizard deck that you can find. But anyway, mm. neither here nor there. That's a homebrew thing. But yeah. uh, back to this. So acknowledging the comments in the, in the comment section here, we've got Gravendale games saying, Oh yes. Yeah, so some of these comments, like we, we covered it. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Vorticon says you can use the Mercs from the dread moon set as well. That's true. Mm, right, yeah. If you if the you ogre, want to make sure you have enough uh, yeah. dark warriors, I do the alarm after the heroes search for treasure fifth time to prevent the alarm. After all, monsters are dead. That's an interesting idea. Ah, Gravendale. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, what I did, I just modified the quest when uh, I Kareth and I were playing. I just put some rooms that you could never detect because there's all these like mm. empty room. There's all these solid rock. I just turned them into like holding areas for a bunch of orcs well actually mm. no no that was the revision what i did was i just spawned two orcs on the stairs like every turn so he had to fight his way through this big army of orcs to get get out of there and so he, they cast a bunch of magic on sir ragnar so he could just like book it through you know veil of mist and swift wind <laughs> but i mean what i did later was i took like two rooms filled them with orcs and just said okay these secret doors automatically open when the alarm goes off if there's no monsters left they come pouring out and head now the only problem was like okay am i going to run out of orcs if you just have the game system you know so but it was it was my idea of yeah another way to do it so there's different ways if you don't want it to be an anti-climax if you want them to fight 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 the whole time because there's there is that Keller's Keep quest where the monsters just keep coming forever. The like, monsters keep coming, and and some heroes. And I think we probably did this when we played it the first time. Which is like, I'm just gonna stand and just keep on fighting. Like, are they coming forever? Yeah, they're coming forever. This war band is you know <laughs> hundred hundred strong. It's not gonna run out. Like, okay, well, I'm down to two body points. I guess let's let's get out of here. <laughs> You know, so you do that because you're not getting gold for killing them. You're not getting XP like a video game. A couple more things. Gravendale Games says, I think it really s spends on the player's experience rather than kid versus adult. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. 
And I think when you're playing this game, like you compare it to other things you know. So you might be like, this plot is weird. Oh, but it reminds me of this movie that I saw or this TV show that I remember. So yeah, I can buy it. Or, oh, it reminds me of this video game I was just playing. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Even though it's ludicrous, the thing that you were just... And, and, that, and that's kind of a cool thing too, because as we know, people like familiar things. It's like, oh yeah, some other thing. It reminds me of some other thing I like. I'm playing it in a different way here. That can be fun. So knowing your audience does help. So yeah, if you know what your kids like, you put something in the quest or you interpret it a certain way. If you know what that group of adults like, although it is always fun when it brings out something surprising, like, oh yeah, wrestling. I remember that. <laughs> or, oh man, I, I hate wrestling. Like, oh, why'd you have to put that in the game? Like, ah, oh, sorry. You know, maybe, maybe it's uh, martial arts or something. Oh, I hate martial arts. Okay, fine. It's not that then. It's boxing. <laughs> I don't know. Could be anything. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things we don't know, but you're right in that back in 1990, you could say maybe they were still figuring the game out, and they've had all this time to think. They have all these years of fan experiences and feedback to go through, and so they're going to go through all that for for those people, and then they're going to sell it to the public, who's never heard of this game, who maybe wants to. Like, oh, a, a simple tabletop game that we could all play together with these weird rules and like, oh, I got to figure out what these things are. But this is a this is a board game convention. I mean, having tokens is like a really like widespread phenomenon, whether they're counters or cards or random things like it's pretty common. Like people kind of expect something like this in a board game. Like when I think of a board game, I expect something like this or cards or dice or pieces. So. I don't think, are you still with me, Carnegie? Kind of went quiet there. Yep, I'm still here. Oh, okay, yeah, thanks. Um, I, I must not be saying anything too controversial, but I I agree with you that there is a certain like dumbing down of the game where they feel like they have to explain everything on that in that booklet. It's not necessary, but it's nice if they do that. And there is also a way in which we can just give them credit, like they'll be able to figure it out. So I think if they include extra tokens, yes, it's not necessary, but it is a way to fill space in a box where people are expecting to find extra little neat things. So that's my justification for the potion tokens, even though that's not strictly necessary. And you might not even want the potions to begin with. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see what. We'll have to see how much gets literally carried over. Yeah. Right. Because, like I said, you know, in mine, I was like, mm -hmm. none of the other quest packs give you a bunch of free potions. Why is this one? And yeah. I tossed that. I tossed that in the junk pile that didn't make it into my version because I was like, they don't need that. They get plenty of potions just from searching for treasure. But like one thing, right? That it's an EU expansion. I'm expecting to be an alchemist shop. I'm expecting we're going to get some kind of potions that are thematically tied to the quests in this book in yeah. some way. Yeah. Yeah, um, because it was because... a shock to me to find out that, yeah, when I look at Keller's Keep, Return of the Witch Lord, the original versions from 1989, like we didn't get them until 91. And it's right. like, wait a minute, where's the alchemist shop? How come there's yeah. no like artifacts, spell scrolls or anything? How come those don't exist? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it, I would expect something like that to be added to this. What they might be, yep. who knows? Who I mean, knows? A potion of dexterity would be really nice because you got to jump over all these big pits that you know do more damage depending on how much armor you've got. Potion of ogre strength, you know? <laughs> ogre grog. Like... That ogre grog can finally come in handy. You can bribe him to fight yeah. for your side, and then that's when you take the red figure and swap him mm. in and say, "Ah, he's a hero now. He's a mercenary." Oh, but you. The Grog wore off. Now he's coming back. Okay, we'll swap out the blue. I mean, I don't know what kind of yeah. things they could come up with. Maybe they'll use uh, Ribby's Remarkable Rims, and they'll uh, let you, you know, say this is a friendly ogre or a bad bad guy ogre. You know, use the other yeah. color. Yeah, so, but yeah, just to, to um, I actually went and looked it up while okay. we've been oh. chatting to, to get back to the spell casting thing, okay. right? Yeah. I'm looking at the original... Well, not the original. It's not the first edition, but it's the, I guess, the revised EU rulebook, right? Second edition from 1990? 
Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so first edition, yeah, just, second I, edition. You know, I grabbed. Yeah, I just yeah. grabbed the PDF off you. It'll yield in and took yeah. a look at it. Yep. Um, the rules are described much, you know, a, a kind of more simply, right? It says you move, then fight, or fight, then move. Yep. Take and, an action and then engage in combat. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, and then it's like, for casting a spell, it says when it's their turn, the wizard and the elf characters have the option of casting a spell instead of attacking. Yep. There's nothing about monsters casting a spell whatsoever. Yeah, I don't think that's a I don't think that's a big deal. No, I'm just noting though. But then, what they tended to do was when they wanted to have some kind of magical enemy, any quest, the quest would just kind of improvise it, and they yeah. would do it differently in different places. You know, so. And I think that's okay too. The fire mage worked differently from the witch lord, you know that kind of thing. I mean, you can't well, reasonably it, you can't reasonably teach someone the entire game me. with just this page. But, yeah, but yeah, go ahead, say what you're going to say. Sorry. Well, so what that meant though was that there was no established mechanics that people were used to when ogre horde came around. It was like all we've ever done up to this point has had one-off enemies with specific mechanics that were unique to them. You know, like I think the EU version of the Witch Lord is just like he just gets to summon an undead figure every turn. Yeah. So you're looking and, at having a universal system that's in the base book right, that you that, already know about, and then you just add to it with these quests rather than it's all right here. And then in the next quest, right. it might be something totally different. Right. And then in, in Wizards of Morcar, it was like totally different. Right. And then in, in Wizards of Morcar, they went, forget about the whole token system. Now each of the spellcasters has a unique deck of spells that yeah, six cards. defines what they know. Right. And it even, like, the spells in Wizards of Morkar don't even completely work if you're not using cards. Like, the the heroes get a dispel or a, you know, some kind of a, like, a counter spell something that, like, makes a, a spell caster have to discard one of their spell cards. Well, that could still work. They just say, okay, well, but it's, you know, that, but just that one off. But I mean, from a strictness of language perspective, it's like, what if they want to use that spell in against the Ogre Horde? It's like, how do you yeah. make someone discard a spell easy. token? They've got, <laughs> you they've, know? Got six, they've got six cards. You roll your d6, so one through six. Yeah. Oh, you discard three. Okay, which was three? That was Mind Blast. Now that one's gone. Yeah. But but yeah, Fair it, enough. it is nicer to be just say, oh, I got to flip that card over. Is it? Uh, darn it. Yeah. Yeah. It. it yeah, I just think that they're likely. I think the other thing, and you you touched on this, right? Is I want these though. I want what I want is their audience actually like? I mean, I think we always have to remember we're not the average customer, right? For Avalon Hill, we're super right? Cool. We're way more alert and knowledgeable about this game than we're the gonna, typical customer is. We're gonna we're gonna buy and, everything and we're gonna rip it to shreds. Whereas, yeah, other people, if they think something sucks, they're not gonna buy it. And you know, so and to a certain extent, this is the first. This is the first release where I really feel like you're going to have people Divided. in camps where you can't. It's going to be. I mean, I, I guess I don't know if it's impossible, but I feel like it would be very, very difficult to have a single release that can please everybody. Because you know, like we, we've we've got a couple people on the Discord who are saying, "I want to just see it re-released exactly as it was." Yeah, and you've got section one. But you're, you're going to have unchanged, and section two are the revised bonus version from Avalon. Hill yeah, but you're going to have. But you know, this is what we started getting into earlier today. Is you're going to have a lot of their customers that have never played any system of rules, but the U.S. slash remake rules didn't don't even know that against the ogre horde was a pre-existing thing like they may look it up or or hear they may you know avalon hill may say hey here's you know this expansion that's never been released in north america before and we're bringing it to you but most i would guess most of their customer base is expecting to get a product that they can open and will work seamlessly with the system that they already have that's that's one possible thing i, I would just assume that that's that that's what they're going to look at as the market reality is like you said earlier right they have to say hey we have to assume this might be the first expansion they've ever bought yes 
You don't want them opening it and getting confused. Like, wait, why are there these weird tracks for body points? Why does it say all the other monsters only have one? Like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, I think some of the comments made more recently were kind of got me thinking about those things too, because my initial reaction was to just to dismiss that and say, nah, because it's true. I don't know how many people bought this back in the day. There might be a huge contingent of fans and they're going to make those people are going to want it as is. I doubt it, but maybe they're going to want it as is. So they'll cater to those people, but they know that it's broken and it sucks. And the rest of people who are just coming into the game fresh are going to go, ah, I don't like this. It's, it's the weird one. It's, it's the odd one out. So they may make some concessions that way. But one thing one person said, and I, sorry to credit you, I, I forgot um who said it but they were saying even if you just use the game system dread spells you're not going to be able to outfit the wizards of morcar exactly as they are you're going to have to either change the spells they have like the the orc shaman almost none of his spells are there except for summon green skins like summon orcs so you're gonna have to create new cards anyway so if you're doing that anyway you might as well like you can recreate their spells yes you can make them a little stronger a little weaker depending on the balance but I don't see it as you can't create new chaos spells or new dread spells. You've got to use the old ones from the game system because we already know that they don't keep themselves to that standard because frozen horror had new spells. Mage of the mirror had like all of them have new spells. Like, so people are expecting new spells anyway. So yes, you can use the pre-existing ones, but you're going to have new ones. And like you said earlier, there, you know, people complain, oh, there's two potions of speed. Okay, fine, we'll rename it to celerity. Oh, there's two potions of restoration and they have different effects. Okay, fine, one superior restoration. So by the same token, they say, well, here's a different, you know, here's, you know, incredibly evil rust <laughs> versus regular rust. It does a different thing. Oh, here's, uh, you know, you know, dark mind blast, or here's like, you know, incredible mind blast. I don't know, I'm, I'm not one of those people that's just going to come up with all the names. I couldn't even guess Dread Moon when they were trying to have me guess the name. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> but but the point is, if you're really worried about that, you can easily change the name. And now you've solved these seemingly ins insurmountable obstacles. Someone has said, well, you can't possibly do this because it has the same name. Okay, we changed the name. Oh, okay, well, now what's yeah. the excuse? Okay, fine. Well, am I really going to get uh, am I really going to get this confused with a card? By having it be a token, you just say the Mind Blast token. You're like, oh, I'm looking at the Mind Blast card. Oh, I need the Mind Blast token. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that could be another excuse to use these. If you don't like these, if you don't like the way they look, like, they could change this design. Who says it has to be an oval like this with these colors? But I think... Yeah, I mean... They yeah, take a little bit I, of nostalgia for these, so I mean, maybe some artwork that kind of is reminiscent of that. Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that? I I think that there's a value in that sort of nostalgia there, but it's true. Just like just... Charming was saying, like he was saying, listen, we we do want to bring these things back. We understand people like them, but we're not going to bring something back and copy it exactly that is broken. So yeah. they learned that lesson after the frozen horror. Right. So they felt more I, free to change stuff. So I, I think they will change some things in here. Yeah. The question remains, I, what will they change and to what degree? I don't know. A lot of these ideas are kind of like interesting. But yeah, go ahead. Say, yeah. say more. Say more. I mean, that's the thing that I, that was the point I was already making though, is like, I don't actually know that the people with nostalgia for the who remember Ogre Horde as it was are actually that large a portion of their customers. Yeah. Hopefully they do that research and figure that out. I mean, I, I think, you know, the people who... 100 million people? Have been... 10,000 yeah. people? Yeah. The people who... I mean, I think the people like us that are knowledgeable, we're vocal. You know, we're a probably disproportionate amount of the discourse comes from people like us because we're yeah. the ones who spend all our free time we're thinking th and talking small, about the game. We're a small number of the actual buyers. I think. Don't you Right, think? but you know, you, you really needed to go digging for info on Hero Quest on your own initiative back in the day to even discover that Ogre Horde was a thing. You know, somebody I think yeah, 
Kramendal said in the chat just now, right? Pretty much nobody in the USA. Like, yeah, but I knew about it because I went and looked it up and was like, oh wow, there were expansions that they never released over here. That's really cool. Well, let me ask a rhetorical retort to that. How did uh, how did players in Italy find out about the Frozen Horror, like before they threw it at a convention and said buy this? Like, how did they know about it? I don't um, think they did. How did German players know about Mage of the Mirror until all that? They time? didn't. Yeah. So, well, that, but that's the point is they, they didn't. Still, they, yeah, they, they people, marketed people, to them. Yeah. I mean, but the type of comments you see are from people from particular markets who are like, I never knew that there were more than four expansions total. You know? I didn't find out. Even people who are relatively knowledgeable, yeah. like. Yeah. You know, because some people even in the U.S. didn't even know that Mage of the Mirror and Frozen Horror were actually released yeah, products. Were barely, yeah, the the only re the, the only reason I knew they existed is because our copies of Keller's Keeper and Turn of the Witch Lord had a flyer that had kind of a blurry photo yep. of them. I, re and there was I remember form. the flyer. Yeah, and there was an order form that mentioned them. And at first I was thinking, well, duh, people in the EU had a flyer for this. But I checked and the flyer doesn't mention this one. So yeah. they would have found out about this. Uh, I don't think there was a TV commercial. Maybe, maybe by seeing it in a see, store. See, yeah, seeing it in a store, Sears catalog, you know, whatever toy stores were popular in in Europe, they would have yeah seen, you know, oh, Ogre Horde, you know, fifteen dollars, yeah, or pounds or whatever it was. So, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like thrust in your face saying like this is the new expansion that you got to buy. It was Keller's Keep Return of the Witch Lord, and then yeah, yeah there might be some other ones out there. And it looks like Storm and Wolf has chimed in with an answer to your question about oh. some of those e EU folks. They were right, saying, that's, I remember they became a sought after thing around 2002 in the German HQ community. Right. By which point they were already obscenely expensive on the secondary yeah. market. Yeah. And, and I can just totally imagine Hasbro saying, listen, Avalon Hill, we want you to do Frozen Horror next because look how expensive that thing is as an eBay, people want that. Not realizing they want it because it's rare and they never played it. Not because it's like really great to play. I mean, it has lots I mean, of cool plastic it's... in it. I mean, I think as long as the players want a bunch of these, like this looks awesome. But then you read it and you're like, oh man, that kind of sucks. <laughs> that I mean, it's there, there's there's some mechanics in Frozen Horror that are a little maybe a little bit too like yeah, one yeah, bad die roll and you just awesome. die. Yeah, it's more but like a video I do game that you play over and over, even though Hero Quest doesn't play that way because you're supposed to remix the quest. So now you've, yeah, yeah is that really fun well, for most you know, kids? That you know, age? but I do think, and and yes, there are some play testing errors. You know, like some. Oh wait, they forgot to put this artifact in any of the quests. Kind of kind of yeah. stuff. I forgot how traps but, work. Yeah. But I actually think right, like again, you know, I've played most of this most of my life when I've played this game, it's been with adults who are pretty competent gamers in general. You know, and in there for six hours while you play a game. Well, and the, all the other quests often, the complaint tends to be more, they're too easy, right? Like that there's not enough challenge to really push the players. At, I laugh at, the, at those comments. It's like, oh, it's too easy. It's like, okay, well, pl let's play the frozen horror rules as written and see how you do. Oh, right. You and, and so, again. and so, no, that's too hard. There, you know, there, there's some stuff. There's some Let's lack of Keller's polish. Keep. Let's play some Killer's Keep. But I actually think that the brutality of Frozen Horror is a welcome thing to have as an option. You know, in yeah. the same way that, like, cool well, in the same way that, like, certain D and D modules were once released, where there was like, hey, you know, nobody's forcing you to buy this. This is for someone who's like, hey, my players say they never are challenged, and we want. A really yeah. brutal module to play through. It's it's a classic in the world of gaming. I mean, asteroids. People figured out how to get you know huge scores by letting, leaving one rock, you know, floating around. So they made asteroids deluxe, and they just crushed everybody's soul, and the game was less popular, and they made less money. It's like, oh shoot. So it's like find the happy medium between the two. Yes, you can easily take the frozen horror and just give everybody much more potions and treasure and stuff to find to compensate. Or you can just delete a bunch of the monsters and traps and make it a little more manageable. You can do that. But the point of Hero yep. Quest is it's not made, I mean, even though, yes, hardcore gamers, RPG enthusiasts, people with lots of experience play it too. That's a lot of us. But it's also meant to be 
a game that you can put in the hands of someone who has no experience, who is not yeah. just going to be utterly crushed. And yes, you could say, okay, they play the game system. They pretty much know what they're doing. Now they're ready for the big challenge of Frozen Horror. Yeah, and if you throw them into Frozen Horror, they're probably or, not going to have a great time. <laughs> no, yeah, or, you know, it's Christmas. Hey, here's the game system. Here's the latest expansion. Oh, yeah, let's play the new one. Crushed, destroyed. You know, you thought you had a bad time playing the trial. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and some kids are not going to be like, well, you know, we got the rest of the summer and this is our only entertainment, so let's just hammer it out and figure it out you know mm -hmm. it's like nah let's go play something that's easier this is frustrating yeah. and some grown-ups are like that too like yeah when i was 14 Absolutely. i was a sore loser i hated losing at games like i you would have to like convince me to play another game if i got crushed that 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 hard so yeah it's knowing your audience so i think it, it w would you say that this this against the ogre horde by itself is like where would you put the difficulty on this? It's oh, it's it's intermediary. It, it's probably I mean it, it's harder than well, the North American um, rules, the body points of the monsters all go up. Yeah, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. So it I mean so it's harder than Keller's Keep or Witch Lord, but it's still definitely easier than Frozen Horror or Mage of the Mirror. Even if you added three more quests of similar difficulty, I mean, I tend I to look buy. at quests. The thing, the thing is, though, is that like quests burn resources, but they also give you resources, yep. right? Like you, you use some potions, but you find some potions, and you find right. some gold, and you use that gold to buy more potions. Oh, that's that's something else we should mention. Um, in the European rules, any uh, potions that you got from the treasure deck. Have to be used right. They they, they have to be used, or they go right. right, right. So, so, so that, that helps to compensate. The fact that you can accumulate potions helps to compensate for the fact that the quests were not written with right. U.S. monster stats in mind. Another thing I want to say though is, if you were playing, so in Europe, you could have the first edition or the second edition, and these expansions don't necessarily they can't like force you to use one or the other. So, right. if you're playing this with the first edition then the gold and the potions are going back into the deck to be found yep. again. To be fair, though, in the European rules, every room can only be searched for treasure once, not per hero, like in the North American yeah. version. So, yeah, you're going to be limited by the number of rooms. And the, if there's a note, you get that. And if there's no note, then you get the card. So right. there's that. So there's none of this like, well, I searched this particular treasure chest, and then I searched the cupboard, and then I searched the floor. Some people like to play that way, but that's a homebrew. We had this big back yeah. and forth on Yield In about it. I learned more about the game trying to counter the arguments that were being presented to me to say, no, 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 they meant to do it this way. They talked about doing it that way in the drafts. You may have seen it. Yeah. They never actually published that. That would have been an interesting way to play. And actually at Gen Con, we actually did play it that way. You could search a room, you get a card, then you search each individual piece of furniture and you've there was like different things like you'd find artifacts you'd be a wandering monster you roll a die to see what it was it was chaos but it was really interesting the problem was is it extended the time it took, it took the, forever it, yeah. yeah it took forever but i mean everybody was entertained so i guess it was successful so i mean i think i think that's one of the things you always have to remember right is the rules and the mechanics and the the elements and that make up these games are always a compromise right it's you know are you going yeah. for realism are you going for complexity are you going for simplicity are you going for time save like all these things you're, you're balancing all these different factors and it's like okay we would prefer to do this from a you know realism perspective or from a flexibility perspective or just from you know from a yeah. from a standpoint of giving the players options or giving yeah. zargon more options but it's like but it just makes the quest take two hours to play. Yeah. I want one or two. <laughs> usually, people when they say they, I want one or two things to be more realistic. The other stuff I can live with. Like yeah. I, I want my crossbow to be like, you know, it, it takes two hands and it takes like a whole turn for me to like cock it, and I've got to like have you know ten bolts you want to... per quest that I purchased. And this, if the string breaks, I got to like restring it, which takes another turn. It's like okay, you can do all that stuff. I and you've got to have a, a maximum range. You know, yeah. it can only fire eight squares away. And, and, I, <laughs> and see, I use that that argument against people because I'll say, okay, what well, the world record, you know, archer can hit that distance. You think these these legendary heroes aren't that good? I think they are. And oh, why wouldn't you keep a second string with you? And I'm sure you carry just enough bolts 
for this quest, you know, and you got just enough money. There's invisible porters, whatever. But yeah, somebody wants to put that in their game, they do it. And if they have more fun, that's great. I'm going to acknowledge some comments here. Uh, Storm and Wolf says, okay, Hero Quest was always a game aimed at young people trying to get into the fantasy stuff. Agreed. Uh, as, however, the first real dungeon crawler offering a sandbox system. And that it then disappeared from the market for 30 years without anything really taking the space. Made it really intriguing for a lot of people who grew up with it, having nostalgia, drew a lot of creative people adding to it. I think, to be honest, there are many similar and even better games nowadays in that area, but none of them has this nostalgic nigh, legendary status, and none have brought so many people into the tabletop RPG and miniature hobby. Now, I do not know any other board gaming community being this open to homebrew and this demanding to a company to keep everything available to everybody. That is my humble opinion and cause of the success of HeroQuest. Well said. Well said. I wish yeah. I'd had you on this show, Storm and Wolf. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I do want to say, I mean, I think, in recent I years, think that... you have had a lot of nostalgia for HeroQuest, but yeah, people haven't been creating... I mean, I guess there was Ultra Quest, but yeah, not not quite. It's like, it was mostly like video games or card games that had like, you know, a logo that kind of looked like this and you know, four heroes, but it was something different. What were we going to say, Carnegie? I mean, I think also Hero Quest has always stood out visually, right? Like that was one of the things that if I think it was Stephen Baker, right, has has said, right, was the idea of all, you know, highly detailed 3D miniatures, no paper tokens, no, you know, A-frames. Unless you're in Brazil. Three-dimensional doors, three-dimensional furniture. Like, there was nothing else on the shelf like it, and that remained true even for a long time after it was out of production. It was still like nobody is, you know, nobody is filling a void with a game that just has the kind of... Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm not just even uh, like if it was a house, I would call it the curb appeal. You know, like you just you look at it and you're blown away by the effort that went into creating an immersive playing surface. Mm -hmm. And even games that are more complex or you know are deeper in some one way or another don't necessarily grab you with that real feeling of like, wow, I can picture how these guys are on this dungeon exploring through all these rooms full of dilapidated cupboards and torture racks and fighting skeletons. And yeah, it aids the imagination as you go. Yeah. And yeah, people have different tastes, different aesthetic tastes. And a lot of this, like you could say, Oh, what's, what's so great about this, this thing? Well, let me tell you what's so great, you know, and then you get that whole name <laughs> and shout out to the bard and everything. Where is that guy? You um, got to close the door against yeah. the uh, evangelizing people yeah. coming filling, to tell you about a group of evangelizing people that you're trying to not answer the door of. Yeah. Right. You, so, you've dropped I, the closed door in their it's a, path. It's a, simple, it's a simple design. It's not as likely to break unless you step on that sword. Yeah, I mean, I, I had some. You know, right away, I definitely like, had some there. fiddly bits break over the years, but. Yeah. And with the bendy plastic, it's like, I I I prefer a design like this than like say the abomination with the spear like jutting out to the side and it takes up too much room. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let me just acknowledge a few more things that are being said here. Uh, let's see. I can see maybe in the future, but the time difference is a bit. Of a killer it's 4 43 a.m here storm wolf well yeah we, we love we love playing with european players but we just have to like start earlier uh, bohemia says i really like frozen horror and mage of the mirror as an adult i really like the challenge i seen it as a hardcore mode and require preparation you can't just jump in with a fresh party actually yes you can we've proven <laughs> that can be done but you do have to kind of overload the system like we played the solo quests with three heroes that's how we did it yeah um, but right. they when I remixed it, I just did away with the solo quests entirely and uh, made them beef beef them up and turned them into group quests. Yeah, because you can. I mean, you can take a, a basic hero, let him find a ton of equipment and potions like right at the start, and then he's effectively a veteran hero at that point. But I mean, yep. Strange Bus, PSK, Blue Star, none of them had played Hero Quest ever before, 
all of them had mm. played D and D before. Um, and we started them off in the frozen horror with basic heroes, but it was a, a barbarian and two guardian knights. That's how we did it. And it was mm. a challenge, especially because PSK insisted on running off by himself to kill stuff. <laughs> I think just to mess with <laughs> me, it was funny. Cause it's like, it created a character. He was a meme in, in his own game. So, but it was a lot of fun. But what we did was we split up those can those uh, quests. So instead of just we sit down and we play one quest until it's done, next week we come back and play part two, part three, part four. So it takes us a month to finish one quest. That's a little more manageable for a lot of people than just okay, we're just going to sit here for six to eight hours and finish it. So, and it's it's hard getting adults together. So yeah, week to week. I mean. We have a lot of people that came back, but sometimes like people would be gone for months and then they join, join back in. Oh, you're still playing this? Hey, give me a piece of that. So back in. And you just, okay, well, here's a hero. Here's what he's got so far. You can pick up where we left off, give, him, give it your own name, and off you go. Storm and Wolf says, oh, yes, the furniture and miniatures and the art made it visually and haptic appearing. In Germany, we got some the Dark Eye board games, German tabletop RPG copy of D&D. Yeah, see, I'm less familiar with some of these other games. I, I remember hearing about them, but I never saw them and never played them. Never had a chance to buy them. Gravendale Games. Is, this, is the release actually confirmed by Avalon Hill, or is it just rumor off the website listing? Bohemia says yes, but basically you had to pump the party and was not fresh. Okay, so I want to say something right here now, which is what, the, what we said at the beginning. I have no reason to doubt that the Ogre Horde is really coming out in 2024, around March, April. The reason is, I have no reason to believe that Hasbro would send false release schedules to store to two different stores in two different states and to websites in the UK. Like, why would they do that? Why would Hasbro troll people like that? Alternately, why would these stores just make up lies for a company that they work with? Neither of those make sense to me. And if it wasn't true, and I'm at Gen Con, and you know, I'm not trying to flex or anything because other people have interviewed them before, the Avalon Hill team members. If it was not true, why wouldn't they just deny it and say, we have no plans for that. It's not coming out. It's not true. That's a false rumor. Oh, it is true, but it's coming out in 2026. Like, there's so many ways they could answer that. Instead, they just say, I don't know what you're talking about. But if we did release it, I think we'd make it 10 quests, and I think we'd probably put more in the box, and it would probably be a bigger box. Like, the way N. Carmine, Chris Nato, you know, chose to answer the question led me to believe that, yes, it is coming out. And yeah, it, why... made, it made it very much sound like it was something that, why would they, they put, wanted to do? Why would they put that symbol in the concept art for that arena that they showed us? That same symbol mm. that on the throne. Oh, hey, that's a warhammer. Uh, but yeah, it's like they deliberately teased us with stuff that. See, the thing is, like, I, I understand that the Avalon Hill guys are having some fun with us, us hardcore fans. They'll like show us something, you know, it's out of focus and it's in the corner. It's like, oh, they're going to see that and go, oh, yeah, I know what that is. That must be this. And then right before this is going to get released, they'll start talking about something else. And they'll be like, oh, what's that? And we'll be like, oh, let's figure out what that is. And then, haha, this came out in between. Like they always do that. But they're not going to try to fool the general public. So that's why when they were showing Sir Ragnar on the cover of Rise of the Dread Moon, even though we didn't get a figure of him specifically, it's like they're not going to put him on the cover if he's not in the game because they're going to be fooling people that buy it in the store now. So, yes, he is in the story. He, you know, doesn't have his dedicated figure, but, you know, it's incorporated. So I think with with against the Ogre Horde right now, we don't have any pictures of the box. We don't have any pictures of the figures. We just know that the name, but they're not going to create another expansion pack. It has nothing to do with the Ogre Horde and call it the Ogre Horde just to fool us. Is my yeah. So no, no. I even if it's got substantial changes, just, whatever comes out is going to be at minimum inspired by the original. Yeah, it's just an accumulation of evidence. So we've got the teasers at Gen Con and the artwork, which they repeated at Spiel Essen. Okay, 
So they showed that logo, which is associated with the ogres. And they showed, um, there was also some artwork. It looked like this, uh, this bloody tile where it's like uh, weapons on the ground. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so it's one of the um, it's one of the overlay tiles from Ogre Horde. Yeah, this one here. Can you see that? Yeah, there was like in the arena, you saw lots of weapons laying around with blood, and it's like, oh, that looks mm. like that. So yeah, why would they do that? So now that doesn't mean that it's coming out March 31st, but that means it's coming out. Like it's definitely coming out. And why would they talk about it with such confidence if they weren't ready to release that information yet? So no, Avalon Hill has not confirmed this. They have not stated it. But for years, they have been saying stuff on Twitter, X, saying like, oh, there's still some European quest packs from the 90s that deserve some love in response to a question about, you know, when are we going to get more original stuff? Well, what European quest packs that haven't been given love are they talking about? There's only two this and wizards of morkar and they said oh ogres 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 they've been talking about ogres for a long time ogre furniture well what ogre furniture is there there isn't any except for this throne and yes there were ogres in mage of the mirror but mage of the mirror has already come out yet why are they still talking about ogres so yeah i have no reason to disbelieve i mean the same sources that are leaking these things have been reliable thus far so i trust them yeah so, They're yeah, actual can... ven vendors, right, that have right. sold all of the, that are selling these products and people are ordering from them and they're getting them shipped to them. The so. only thing, the only thing that'll stop against the Ogre, Ogre Horde from coming out is Hasbro changing their minds and saying, oh, just kidding, we don't want this to come out or we want you to, you know, focus elsewhere. Or we're laying off the entire team, you know, oh, we just, you know, I don't think anything that catastrophic is going to happen. But if they wanted to, they could pull the plug and just say no more. And then all the yeah. stuff they plan for the next three, four, or five years, gone. gone. That could happen. Hopefully it doesn't. I mean, that's what happened to the original. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were going to do two more, uh, at least two more quest packs. We were going to get Wizard and then, War. And then they just and, had the rug pulled out from under that's, them. That's another thing I want to talk about because, and just briefly, because I know we've done it before, is Encarmine's response to when are these coming out? When, when are we getting the Dwarf and the Wizard pack? Because originally they said... We have everything. Like, we have all the drafts. Like, oh, some fans have the drafts? Well, guess what? We've got them all. And if you're missing anything, we've got that too. Like, so they've got the sculpts. They've got the art. They have the rights to everything. So fans don't have the rights to that stuff. I mean, we might have, like, photocopies or pictures of things. We might mm -hmm. be in contact with some of those artists. We might be, like, making our own versions for all they know. But they have it. So there's nothing stopping them from making it if they wanted to. But the way he explained it is they don't feel hemmed in anymore by what came before in the sense that back when they were designing the game system, they were trying to copy it word for word, more or less, as much as they could. And they were grabbing stuff from the European version and sprinkling it into the US version to give you a best of. But once they got to Frozen Horror and they realized, oh, there's some problems here. People have actually like complained about this stuff before and are making their own changes. So they felt a little more free with Mage of the Mirror. This is what I gathered. And then with this, they're going to feel very free to change things, even while maintaining kind of a, the skeleton or the outline of it. I don't know that to what extent that's actually going to happen. I mean, maybe it'll just be like three quests tacked on and then it's all the same. But maybe, like you say, they'll change this mechanic or they'll change some other thing that we don't know about. But with the, with the Dwarf quest pack, it was only half done. So assuming they don't have some extra pages that we don't know about, they'd have to make it up. And with the Wizard quest pack, it was like 80, 90% done. So there'd be a little bit to change. But the thing is, unlike these that have nostalgia behind them, and you know people can buy these on eBay and go, oh, okay, this is what I can expect. There's nothing for people to look at unless they dig up those notes, which only a few people have seen. So because of that, they can just, I think they're just going to sift through that stuff and just come up with their own thing. They might use some ideas here or there. I mean, we probably will get some type of dwarf-focused adventure. This was not yeah. a dwarf-focused adventure. I think the other thing Wizard. to consider with with the dwarf and elf packs as they were originally conceived, right, is that 
part of what they were trying to do was use all of the molds from the European expansions yes. up. And and I want to be a little bit uh, respectful of like Luke, uh, Luca Pachi and uh, some of the stuff that they didn't want to release to the public yet. But yes, the idea, the thought process that we got a glimpse of from the designers of those packs was that they assume the North American players have no idea about the European stuff and vice versa. But they had full access to the European packs. So they had a copy, basically photocopies of the Ogre Horde stuff. Same thing with Wizards of Morkar. And they were, yeah, they were taking those figures. So they're like, so these guys would have been in the dwarf pack. Like these guys would have. They would have had like different stats, different abilities than what you saw here. Just like these guys were put into Mage of the Mirror with all of a sudden 10 body points, you know, and they didn't have that mechanic where you can't pass through them because they take up the whole corridor, like anything like that. So, yeah, they were using those assets as inspiration. Absolutely. So, well, but also from a physical component perspective, right? Like, yeah. and these are guys, you really going to have four special wizard figures in Wizards of Morkar and then the wizard pack has four special wizard figures again yeah you know now now that you're trying to make it a single integrated product line like it would feel very duplicative you know well it doesn't have to i mean you could just say that's that's an orc that's an orc with a crossbow that's an orc with a <laughs> a staff no 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 i mean the wizards right oh yeah this is this is uh this is you know fanrax the necromancer this is Bildar, the the geomancer. <laughs> like, I mean, why not? Well, this, but what I mean, this, right, this is that guy, they, they were trying to find homes for the fi the same yeah. figures, right? They were like, hey, of, hey, it's less special. person who's it's less special mm -hmm. if you just suddenly say, oh yeah, this uh, this character that is so well established as the frozen horror is now the you know the swampy meat man or something like oh okay no that's the frozen horror not the swampy meat man you can't tell me oh, or, that that's or even man. if even if they make a new miniature creatively it feels duplicative right it's like oh we just got an expansion that added a whole bunch of new wizards and now here's another expansion with a whole bunch where it. the main the main feature is a whole bunch of new with wizards <laughs> like brand cast i i don't buy it at all because who is going to turn down more miniatures are you? Is the average customer? I mean, if they see another pack and it's like... They I don't know. They're not just going to have a piece of paper in here saying, oh yeah, if you happen to have one of these other expansions, use those figures. No, they're going to give them to you. And yeah, maybe they'll just change the color. Or maybe I think it's a whole new skull. It's, it's more that if I were them, I'd wonder if we, they would start getting blowback if... Right, because oh, just... Being just lazy. You're just being cheap. Right. Well, You're like the greedy. idea, right, originally was they said our US customers aren't going to have access to these. So let's So we're going to repurpose yeah. we're going to repurpose these miniatures and use them for something totally different and this will be the only way that our customers will ever experience this. But now it's going to be like no no no, their customer base is going to have access to Ogre Horde and Wizards of Zargon or whatever they're going to end up calling it. Now and then if they like I don't Yeah. No. In the remake. Well, you mean if they release Wizards of Morkar and then release uh, the Wizard, oh, Wizard Quest, Quest pack? pack. Right, exactly and then it'll like be like... The notes. Right, it would be like, oh, no, you no, just that, used the Wizards again? Like, that, that way, seems kind of strange. No, in that way I agree with you. It, if, if it were me, I would, yeah, I would release both of them. But the, the pack that nobody saw, I would just use new sculpts. But I would still keep the concept of, okay, here's four more Wizards, who cares? Here's twenty more, maybe a thousand more wizards. What's wrong with yeah, that? Yeah, maybe. You may not, maybe you that's may not buy them all. And yeah, if you're if you're that fan that's like, well, I've got to buy everything, and I'm mad that it's not different enough for me. It's like, eh, I can kind of brush that off because you're like this percentage. I mean, you're paying customers, but you're this percentage. Everybody else is like, oh, cool. I can either buy the wizards from this pack or the wizards from this pack. Which one do I want? Eh, I'll get that one. I'll get this one. Yeah, I don't see the big deal. Yeah. Because we'll how see. many how many archetypes you know? of characters are there? Like I wouldn't mind yeah. getting a box full of orcs that are totally different than the orcs I already have. Well, heck, they're already doing that. Spirit Queen Stormman, you know, Prophecy of Telor. Yeah. I already have orcs. Why do I want this? I don't know. 
I mean, I think the thing, though, is that people... I think there's a desire to see... New things. Stuff that not just new in terms of the physical sculpt, but also new in terms of mechanics, right? Like, people got really excited by the Spectre, because it was like, oh, it's ethereal, what does that mean? Pass through walls. You know, pass yeah. through walls, like... We have heroes doing you know, that, but not many monsters that do that. Right, you know, um... Elven Archer, right, in Mage in the Mirror, it was like, oh, now there's a monster with an actual dangerous ranged attack that, you know, yeah. you can't just sit back and take pot shots with a crossbow all day. Right. Although you and, can uh, use uh, Twist Wood and get rid of his crossbow. But mm -hmm, now that's sure. gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, but that's the idea is that, you know, I think people, they like new sculpts, they like new miniatures, or they like, a lot of people like more of the same miniatures even. Yeah. This. But I think not... people all get more excited when they get new miniatures and new mechanics. Sure. Well, and, and, and it's it, like, that's it one of the things you. I wondered. It inspires yeah. you. Like, okay, this guy has a flail. That has no bearing at all. He's the same old orc. But maybe somebody's like, well, maybe this flail works differently than the, the sword. Maybe these two guys have different stats because of their weapon. It's inspiration. Sure. It could be. Yeah. But in game terms, yep. it's like, no, this, this is just a generic marker. Like, it could be just this. Here's your monster right here. This is whatever I say it is. And you just yeah. use your imagination. But yeah, it's cool to say, oh, okay. Ah. Like, we're going to have spells that conjure physical things onto the board that stay there until destroyed. You know, that was yeah. the, the walls from... Yeah, you were just holding up the little... The you, little uh, you could just put a tile or just say, yeah, that square right there is the wall. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's like so many other things in HeroQuest. It's fun to do it that way. So they have both, yeah, the theater of the mind, the imagination, and the spark of the imagination, these little physical objects. Let me get to some of these comments. Um, so I guess we really have filled up the whole time talking about Hero Quest. We could have argued about Star Trek, Star Wars. <laughs> I guess we had that conversation on Discord. So we were arguing like which series we liked the best, which movies were good, which ones were bad. And we had all kinds of opinions. It was great. But I guess we'll have to save that for another show. So let me just read these comments. Um, hey, Elviler. Yeah, a lot of people have been coming and going. Thank you for joining us here on the Rantcast. Very HeroQuest-focused Rantcast. Uh, Bohemia says, I'm curious to see if Ogre Horde is the real name of the release. Well, I think there were some people disputing whether Ogre Horde uh, Quest Pack was, the, was a name change or just an abbreviation, a short form. Hispa's Argon pointed out that in... Uh, I guess in early development or I guess early advertising, it was just called Ogre Horde, the Ogre Horde or against the Ogre Horde. People were having all kinds of fun speculation. Well, maybe we're not really against the Ogre Horde. Maybe we're working with them. <laughs> maybe they're like a neutral. It's like, I don't know what, what, whatever looks good on the box, excuse me, whatever looks best on the box is what they're going to do. Like, you know, whatever. So yeah, I, but, I don't have but a I mean problem. That... It's going to evoke for people, okay, there's a horde and there's ogres. You know, it's going to be that instead of this. So people that remember this are going to go, oh, it's it's evoking this thing. That's what they're going to see. Other people are just going to go, oh, there's ogres in it. Just like saying, okay, you're not calling it the Barbarian Quest Pack anymore, but you're still calling it Frozen Horror. Okay. So I'm not going to expect necessarily other quest packs devoted to specific heroes. But the main essence is there. So I wouldn't read too much into a name change like that, whether it's 100% or not. I mean, originally when I called those stores, they said on the list, it says against the Ogre Horde. Like they gave me that name. I didn't ask them, do you have against the Ogre Horde? Well, we've got Ogre Horde. No, they just said against the Ogre Horde 2024. So I think that was yeah. the working title. And yeah. changing, it might also just be that yeah. the the information that's provided early via the distributorship networks, you know, like they're providing stuff before yeah. copy has been finalized for these yeah. things. So it's it like this is box. this is the working title. Yeah. We haven't come up with the title. We, we haven't decided if it's final or not. So yeah. I doubt like they're going to change these, something completely wild. Yeah. yeah, so this, but this store is, you know, giving it their own name, right? They're deciding what to call it on their website because they're deciding to go yeah. public with very yeah. premature pre-orders. Like, 
But it's like calling this. It's color. a website. It's like calling. They'll this be able to color. change it later. <laughs> yeah, it's just a website. They could call this Kellers, or what if they just called it Witch Lord? Well, no, it's Return of the Witch Lord. Well, it's Witch Lord. You know. Yep. Oh, it's is it the game system or is it Hero Quest or is it co the core set or you know? Yeah, they it might just be like a yeah convenience thing that's not necessarily hundred percent. Um, I wouldn't read too much into it, but we're just going with what we've got so far. Yeah. I have no reason to doubt that that website, I mean, it's still up. It hasn't dropped off the face of the earth. Cause that was the other thing when, yeah, I mean, when it, we had those other pre-orders for some of those other websites, it's like, as soon as everybody noticed it and started talking about it, then they took it down. It's like, oops, yeah. we weren't supposed to show everybody or I don't know if they got yeah, it. I mean, it seems to be a legitimate yeah. vendor. Yeah. Yeah. People um, have, have bought from it before. I have no reason to doubt. Yeah. Doesn't mean they couldn't make a mistake. Right. Uh, but uh, and 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 just to correct one thing, uh, so Avalon Bill said this, and I'm sure he had to say this, but at the same time, I don't think he's lying. <laughs> why would he? Is to say that why were the Spirit Queen's Torment and Prophecy of Teller going to be Hasbro Pulse exclusives for two months? Like, why aren't they opening up to all stores until 2024? And I was speculating, well, maybe they're trying to punish stores that released it too early because you know Amazon was shipping those expansions out like a month people were getting it before oh. the release date right i thought well <laughs> they have that don't they have a right don't they have some kind of agreement to like well i'm going to slap your hand if you release it too early like if you go into gamestop and you're like well they're like this game releases in in one week I'm like no nah, just give it to me now like that guy's gonna get fired if he if he <laughs> breaks the rule but avalon bill's like no this was not any type of retaliation against our distributors it's like okay okay so he said it um so I'll, I'll take him at his word that that's not the reason why they did it. Why they did it specifically, they haven't admitted. I mean, a lot of people were saying, ah, oh, they're just greedy or they just, they only want people in the U.S. to be able to get it or I don't know. That's not really true either because they have the European ones there too. But I guess that's a whole nother topic. Let me, let me get to some more of these comments here. Sorry, guys. I keep bouncing back and forth. Gravendale Games says, okay, sounds good. Kurgan says 100%. <laughs> Storm and Wolf says, yeah, I also think that Avalon Hill guys are nice to actually maliciously troll the community. I, I enjoy they're, it. They're too, too, they're too nice. Too nice. Oh, yeah, he did say that. Too nice to actually maliciously troll. Well, yeah, yeah the key is maliciously. They do right. mess around. They drop clues. Uh, I mean, I think in Carmine said it one time is that they're lurking in the background. I mean, before they had their own Discord. You don't see them as much, but they're still around. They'll they'll just let a conversation go, and like we're throwing stuff out. And it's only if we say something that's absolutely 100% wrong that they'll step in and go, no, nah, I think we would rather do it this way. Or, no, actually, Games Workshop was not trying to sue us to stop HeroQuest from coming out. They actually wanted it to come out. You know, he'll like correct it in that sense. But then most of the time, it's just they'll just let it go. Or they'll drop little hints. But yeah, they're not trying to lie to fool us. So I think what Uncarming has done in a few cases is an expansion is about to get announced or released or something. Like some big reveal is about to happen. And he'll get us thinking about something that's coming out like two years from now. And then it comes out. So it's like he didn't lie. But he also misdirected us a little bit, like a magician saying, hey, look over there. <laughs> That's something real. I'm pointing to this red scarf in my hand, but you missed the rabbit that was in the hat, like that you were talking about two <laughs> seconds ago. So he does that. And that's fine. Like, I don't think that's bad. I think that's fun. And most customers don't see that. They just, oh, here's the product. But we're the ones hanging on his every word and trying to figure out, you know, the riddles and everything. And yeah, it's it's yeah. it's kind of a game in and of itself. And we won't get to do this again because this stuff will be out and then it'll just be part of history. It's like but yeah, oh, they, yeah, they don't they don't do things journey. they don't do things like tease the idea that they might be working on an adaptation of the Ogre Horde when it's just completely not in their plans. Yeah, not it's never gonna happen. Like <laughs> yeah, like they would just pretend to do it and they'd make like fake box covers and they do all this stuff and then there's suddenly like a huge demand and like tons of angry customers like beating down the doors of Hasbro. And they're like, you guys better release this. Like you have them all believing this is really happening. And they're like, Oh crap. And then like try to make it for real. Like, yeah, that that's, that's not what's happening at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, more comments. Um, 
yeah, they 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 troll us with leaks and teasers and tongue in cheek, but there's there's truth to it to all of it. And, and it's, it's always good natured. Yeah, it's good natured. Yeah, they're not trying to like yeah be mean to us. Uh, Bohemia says, "I'm sorry, but this name change gave me very strong dwarf pack vibes." It's Interesting. Ogre horde. Yeah, I don't. Ogres and dwarves. I. I'm, yeah, I don't. I, don't... See it, but, eh. I mean, one thing that might be worth um, segueing into just briefly, right? Is I, you know, some people have wondered, will they take advantage of ogre horde to bring the last of the mythic heroes to the general oh, public? Yeah, that was that was Ash's video. He's like, put the druid in there, because as I'm, we know, druids yeah, and well, the other thing are natural enemies. Yeah. They've been fighting for centuries, as we know in the history of hero quest. And no, you're writing <laughs> history as you go. No, no, he didn't say that, but. Any excuse? Yeah. I mean, what what does the Guardian Knight have to do with Rise of the Dread Moon? Nothing. Nothing. But they yeah. put him in there anyway because they wanted the fans to have I access to it. to it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an easy way to do it. You're going to buy this anyway, and here's the thing that you wanted. Yeah. The, just like the putting one, the mythic characters into. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that gives me pause, right, is that where have we seen the pause. mythic characters come out? Has been in the re-releases of the mythic quests so well, i wonder done. if well i wonder if they're still hoping to work work out a deal to get a retail release of perpetual darkness in which case they might bundle the druid in there because then they would complete that symmetry of three quest packs three heroes you know it yeah. it's a it's a thought i mean you know i think probably until the contents of ogre horde are spoiled there's not going to be any way to know unless yeah. for some reason they give us a firm answer and i don't know why they yeah. would do that i mean i could see many ways i think the druid will get released the question is just how and when i think it absolutely will at some point yeah because i would we, be if we got the bard that everybody made fun of i'm sure we're going to get the druid that people made fun of not quite as hard like that was I the one where they're the like that's a silly design so they revised the druid and then they revised it again so you can see how it changed from the original version where right. she's like in like yoga pants to yep. the version where she's like got the kind of like islander like leaves and like fur and bones and all that stuff yeah will it be the same sculpt probably will there be a bear and it'll just be like a polar war bear that's red or will it be totally I, different? I hope not. <laughs> it may or may I hope not. There's just, something better than but, that. But see, but... we're talking about that just because they did that with the um, the, with the, the gargoyle. Gargoyles. Yeah. The, the mythic gargoyle. I mean, they're just they're spitballing. So it, yeah. they might Thank, they might thankfully. give us a hero, a hero <laughs> collection with with new sculpts. Maybe we'll get like a male version and some redesigned cards, or maybe we'll get yeah a bear, a bear form. I mean, could be. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I think yeah, a lot do you depends keep... on... Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. Keep me on track here. Uh, okay, so... Joe had some stuff to say. Yeah, Joe Kosher. Thank you. Yeah, you guys have been waiting for a while. Sorry about that. Uh, Keller's gave us more green skins. So, like, goblins, orcs, fimmers, or abominations. And Witchlord gave us more undead. Yep. So, I would be okay if we got wizard minis in both Wizards of Morkar and the unreleased wizards pack. Yeah, because this is not Lord of the Rings where there's only. Two, only five wizards. Five, yeah, five wizards. I had to count them. Yeah, five wizards, not counting like video games and stuff. So, yeah, you could be, have lots of magic users out there. I think. And, I mean, I guess the thing that I see there, though, is do you want them to release a quest pack that you're okay with, or do you want them to release a quest pack that you're super excited about? Yeah. Because well, I think, you know, that's what we've seen with Spirit Queen and, and Prophecy of Telor is some people, especially, I mean, people who never had the opportunity to have it in the first place see, are super excited for it. But like, a lot of the people who already have it are like, I'll probably buy it, but it doesn't really, you know, it. but I'm not like super, you know, I'm not see, jumping for joy over it. Yeah, like, see, I just, I, I think the bottom line is you have to have good quality products that are affordable for you to make and you're going to profit from and you have to market the stuff so that people know it exists and want to buy it. 
Mm -hmm. You can't worry about the super fans who were like, oh, I've already bought this twice and you made another special edition and I got now I got to buy that one. I'm so mad that I have to have to buy it and I can't stop myself from buying it. Well, like, the difference here would like be, be that this would be following this would be two retail releases, right? We're talking about a, a hypothetical where they release a Wizards of, of Zargon and then they release a Wizard Quest pack. Oh, to make them different they from each other so that they don't feel like oh, right where it's like. Being. Yeah, because like yeah, the fans might might look at it and be like, I get "Okay, they're saying. just going back to the wizard well again." I okay, that's saying. cool, I guess. Because otherwise, whereas if, if they do something no, no. completely this, new, this is this yeah. Is go, sorry, go ahead. I, I hadn't thought of this. You you sparked this in my head. So they give you the box and they're like, "Here," and oh, you want you want these mercenary guys too? Well, here here, you know, you've got a big pile of those. Inside the box, there's two quest books. Wizard quest book, so there's ten adventures and stats for these guys, and then there's Wizards of Morkar, ten more quests, different rules. For, I mean, they could do that; they could combine them. That and would be really neat, actually. There's no rebuying, but would they really do that? I I think they probably would just like well, well get a, because we'll get a wizard, wizard, we'll get a Wizard quest pack that's only loosely inspired by the old one. Yeah, that the Wizard quest had. pack. Right, like the one we know about was supposed to have a whole bunch of other new models too, right? Like there was supposed to be minotaurs and giant spiders. I forget what else. Yeah, yeah I'm not right. Spoil so, it all, but because there are some fans that are doing some yeah. things that that we kind of may or may not know about, but um, the uh, yeah, the point is there's no expectation, whereas there is expectation with something like this. So you have to kind of respect this, even as you're like tweaking it, and revising it. And I think mm -hmm. the original like framework, like in Carmi was pretty clear about that, like that framework. Because they want I remember, it to be recognizable. Like, well, yeah, it needs to be somewhat recognizable. But um, so Amalgamash did this and I did the same thing in my video. Um, whereas when when Rise of the Dread Moon was not as well known, we were thinking, oh, this will be the knight quest pack. There'll be three solo quests with the knight. He'll have special artifacts and potions just for the knight, you know, that'll raise his body points and his mind. Like, we were trying to, like, put it in that framework of those themed hero packs. Turned out to be completely wrong. Both of us were completely wrong on that. But we had no reason to assume that that was otherwise. It was like all the signs were there, but they're not holding themselves to that same standard. So there may never be a pack that's like the old wizard pack. I mean, who says those solo quests are even fun? Like if, yeah, if I had to guess, to if I had to guess the feedback on the solo quests was probably not great. Yeah. They because they're too hard. hard. Yeah. Like the, like the quest books are straight up lies, right? Where it's like, this is a good way to gear up a fresh yeah. hero. It's like, no, this is a good way for a fresh hero to die. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a brand new player to get really frustrated and not want to play the game. Because you're right. playing by so yourself, like, you're not even getting backed up by the other heroes. Like, oh man, my wizard's getting killed. No, 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 we'll help you out. Don't worry, the elf is going to come over and, and, and you know heal you, and he's going to give you a, another dagger, so you're going to be okay. Yeah, but you're just by yourself. Oh, you got trash. Like, I've played, so I've played with family members, like people that are maybe newer to the games, they're like, oh, I don't know, this isn't much fun. And other people like, oh, that was really challenging, but it's like, man, I died again. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was really expecting them to have scalable difficulty. Like, we've never seen that yet mm -hmm. in HeroQuest, where it's like, oh, if you've played Quest before, this. If you haven't, then this. You know, or whatever. If you're an experienced player, get this, this. They could do something like that, but maybe they're thinking, oh, that's that's too complicated. I mean, you've got room on these pages to, like, put more. But yeah. maybe it's too well, much. I, it's I'm like expecting... putting two different yeah. rule sets in the same book. I'm really expecting that there are going to be artifacts at minimum, and that's going to probably mean more notes to decide, hey, we've got to put those artifacts somewhere. Well, and as Covert Nerd said, why couldn't they just sell us a deck of cards and say, oh, here's a bunch of monsters for you to use. Oh, you want some uh, some extra spells? Oh, here's some spells you can use in your quest. Oh, you want yeah. some artifacts? You know, and they could give that all to us. But then it's like, okay, it's you can't play it by itself. It's just a deck of cards, but you can't play this by itself either. You need the game system. Yeah. I mean, just, they just have to just decide, is this something that people are going to want? Is, are people going to actually buy this? Is this going to make them money? 
And if it is, then they just have to get, you know, whoever to sign off on it, and then it's 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 going to happen. I think there's also, are they going to buy this and maintain their enthusiasm for whatever we do next? Because I think it's certainly possible to to choose a strategy where you sort of take advantage of the existing good faith where it's like the customers are like well everything up till now has been good so i'm going to keep buying yeah and then you buy something and you go Finger. what the hell is this why did they release this this They're is so useless sorry. They're gonna make up for it in the next one yeah because not everybody is going to buy every pack so you kind of have to nail people after you the initial buy on each one i mean when i when we were kids it was like we've got the first three and then the rest is your imagination. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the oh. time we maybe saved up enough money to actually get the frozen horror, it's like it's no longer available. Like a lot of people were in that position. I don't think I ever actually tried to order it. I think by the time we finished playing all the other adventures, like I did, I'd, I'd had my fill of Hero Quest, and I was going to go play Sega Genesis instead, <laughs> like hang out with my <laughs> friends at the roller rink, you know, whatever I was doing at the time. But some people are going to be like, yeah, we've hammered, we've knocked these out. Where's the next one? I'm not going to write my own quest. Give me, give me more content that I can, you know, consume. It's like, okay, well, yeah, they have to know who their audience is and uh, keep filling that out. Yeah, I, sorry, I was going to get to more of Joe's comments. Uh, we also got Elf Mercs in both Mage of the Mirror and Rise of the Dread Moon. Well, we got evil elf monsters. We got I evil elf got monsters. Mercs. Yeah, but the fact that they gave us extra ones, a lot of people were saying, oh, we could hire some of these, couldn't we? <laughs> Maybe there's yeah, some yeah. elves that are friendly to your side. And who knows? And there were. a campaign that might <laughs> still happen. Maybe. No spoilers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing about it is, going back to like kind of an earlier let's say criticism or challenge that you were talking about is i have no problem with an expansion being unique and saying these rules are only for this expansion no nowhere else as opposed to saying well these are now universal rules that are going to apply to everything like i think they've done a fairly good job so far of balancing that because if you look at the frozen horror they're saying well you can use those mercenaries in the elf quest pack if you want to but you mm -hmm. don't get to use them in the game system. You don't get to use them in Keller's Keep. Now they took the elf spell. I mean, technically, the there's said, nothing well, yeah. stopping you. But, but but they gave you an app. Like, why didn't they yeah. allow you just to use them in all of them? They're they're basically saying, here's our intention. But yeah, they they can't. They're not going to send Pinkertons to you and say, no, you can't use that over, ogre throne in Keller's Keep. That's that's illegal. It's like, no, I'll I'll just I'll put it on top of the dwarf's head the whole time, and that's because <laughs> that's what I want. It's like, can't stop you. But yeah, they, they kind of gave us like guidelines. So we always asked, well, where are the rules for using the, the Warlock? There's no rules for using the Warlock. How do we use him? Well, the app just, you swap out one of the other heroes and put the Warlock there. Like, okay. You know, it's like pretty simple. Like, that's one way to do it. So with Rise of the Dread Moon, they gave us those new mercenaries, but they didn't say we could take those mercenaries and use them in other quests and vice versa. You could on your own, but I think the, the way that um, in other words, Mage in the Mirror was written is it basically said if you have mercs from somewhere else, you can use them here. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, okay, that does make sense. So you could use like the Arbalist and the whatever the Glaive. And they very carefully gave them the same stats and the same hiring costs as the yeah. mercs we already had. So it's like. Yeah, the, the difference is... Functionally, have, they're the same. You don't have the reputation tokens, you don't have the disguises, so that stuff goes out the window. So effectively, it's just another miniature with the same Yep, stat. but it, you know, some players just like to have the variety. Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to hire an Arbalist, not a but, Crossbowman. But some people... You can worry. hire a Crossbowman, you know? Like. Some people, yeah, some people legitimately worry. They're like, oh man, what if I use the elf spells in the trial? Like that's going to throw everything off. Or what if I'm using, you know, the I've been doing that. I've been doing that yeah. for like 15 years. But, but the point is, yeah, it, it, okay. It works great. But those early quests had no, like they're not broken because they didn't account for expansions that were going to come out years later. No. So yeah, you don't have to worry. Well, what if someone uses a command spell on Sir Ragnar? Then what happens? It's like, it doesn't have it there. And if you want to put it there, you figure it out. 
<laughs> like there's no official answer yeah. you figured out because because there's so many people out there this is something that i was i i kind of it has some tension for me i guess this whole time is that even though hero quest is the sandbox game that you make it up yourself and yet they sell us more stuff <laughs> even though you could have made it up yourself there's still so many people online that are so adamant about finding out the official answer to everything they got to know the exact like which yep. quest happens before which other quest which spells are you allowed to use what's the exact you know way to do this particular weapon and and from a certain standpoint i get it like i want to know what the designer's intentions were and why do i want to know that because i want to know if it's stupid or if it's good and if it's stupid i'm going to ignore it and if it's good i'm going to do it or maybe i'll do something similar like I'm not asking because I feel like I have to do it the way that they intended. Like I'm going to learn the rules of chess. And if I want to play like fairy, fairyland chess, I'm going to play fairyland chess, you know? So I, I kind of get what they're asking, but it, it almost feels like some people like have like hemmed themselves in. Like I can't, I can't make a move as Zargon until I get on Twitter and find out what Avalon Bill said it was. It's <laughs> like, you know, find it in the book. And if you can't find it, they gave you that guideline. Use your imagination, use your experience, figure it out. But it's like people are like, no, 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 I got to look up the answer. Like, let me get my phone out in the middle of the campaign and figure out, okay, now does the crossbow hit the diagonal squares or doesn't it? Oh, it does? Oh, okay. Well, all right, guys, we're going to play it that way now. <laughs> it's like, no, you make the decision. So I don't know. I, 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 I wish people felt more free to kind of play the game how they want to but i guess when you're a kid like i guess i see i see two things like there's kids that are just like oh i'm just gonna play with this toy and you know it's just limitless this could be anything this could be an airplane this could be a building well it looks like a wizard why is it a wizard well it can be whatever you want but then there's other kids that are like no no, no i want to know exactly like who made this what was it for what are the rules explain them to me i'm going to memorize them and i'm going to do it you know in the proper order like both those things are like intention with one another in different ages and so i guess it's true for adults too like people they want to know like the instructions what was this intended for but then they also want to just go off on their own yeah i mean verge just had a a good point i think in the chat there right it's you know a lot of this stuff comes because someone's running a game their player asks a question like hey can i do this does this work and the person is like and the Zargon is like, I'm not sure. I'm going to ask the designers, like, hey, yeah. is this supposed to work? We can't all be And like you say, <laughs> like, you know, oh, and then you... you Naboo! <laughs> like, okay. And then you get an answer back, and then you can make an informed decision. Do I think this is good for the way my table plays or not? Yeah. It's it's like getting a second opinion. But I guess the, the thing that's bad form is just never being able to make the call as Zargon. Like, you're the leader of the game. You should yeah. make a decision. Because, yes, it's true. We just got done saying we don't expect you to do hours and hours and days and days of prep before the quest begins. That you've mapped out every possible, you know, path and question that could be answered. But, yeah, just make a decision and, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later you come back and say, well, I know we were rolling to jump over the pit traps, but what if instead we like drew a random tile or what if we just, you know, got rid of the, you know, somebody made a suggestion. Let's try playing it this way. Now players like, okay, let's try it this other way. Play it. Ah, that was not as fun as the other way. Let's go back to, the other way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. do that stuff in between quests is kind of what, what I'm thinking rather than taking yeah. game time, like arguing over rules or trying to like look stuff up. But yeah, you're I wonder if kids people... like, ah, this doesn't make any sense. Let's go to the end. I wonder if, yeah, go. I sort of wonder if people have also just gotten used to not playing in settings that are kind of as sandboxy as Hero Quest was mm -hmm. kind of intent intentionally made. Like, you know, like people will be like, "Hey, can I switch weapons?" And it's like, "Well, you know what? The rules are completely silent on that." Yeah, you can. You know, there is no guidelines given whatsoever on you know. Yeah. Is there a limit on how much gear my character can carry? Like, the is, is there no. any limit on how much, you know, how many weapons I can bring into a quest? And it's like, no, the, the rules gotta, just don't say anything at all. You got to write it on your character sheet. But guess what? I can write really small. I can abbreviate. 
I can write on the back. <laughs> well, but but what I mean is like the game yeah. is really saying we're not going to we're intentionally not giving you guidance on this. Oh, yeah. We want you to make a call for your we we don't want you asking the designers what the correct rule is. Like we want you to decide for yourself what the right answer is. At the same time, it's like, the designers have an idea of what they think, but it's like that discussion I had within Carmine, the spiritual journey. It's like he thinks the spiritual world of Hero Quest ought to be like this, but he's not going to impose that viewpoint on the game. Right. He's not going to write it. He's not going to write it into the rules. This is how it is. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we were kids, what we did was like, we actually mimed it out. We're like, okay, I'm going to put this sword on my left hip. I'm going to put the other sword on my right hip. <laughs> and the shield is hanging on my back. <laughs> and I've got the helmet on my head. And the crossbow is hanging from the front of my belt. You know, it's like you're, you're it's like, okay, yeah. sure. Well, actually, so we've got some guys that are hanging back that are carrying our food and water and stuff. Those guys are hanging on to our extra weapons. So when it's time for me to get my other weapon out, those guys run up and they hand me the weapon that I need. And I give them the other one. And then they run back to safety. <laughs> like, okay, it works. <laughs> Yeah, my magic bag yeah. of holding <laughs> carries all the stuff I need. I mean, and and it's not completely true that these things are always left blank forever. We did get, you know, they eventually did write in rules about, like, hey, when can you swap stuff with your buddies? Like, mm -hmm. People wanted that clarification, so they gave it. Yeah, but, the, but it wasn't in the original rules, and so that was another one of those kind of... But I think, yeah, maybe it was just that people always would want to oh. make it do it in ways Actually, that are broken, like the sharing Americans, the same battle axe every turn or something, you know? So, not to be so pedantic, but it does say oh. that you can, like, for instance, the North American version says you can drink more than one potion at a time. And mm -hmm. it's, but it says you can give one potion to an adjacent hero, but only on your turn. So it's already in yeah. there. But yeah, a lot of us just played like, okay, the two heroes are next to each other. Okay, I'm going to give you half my stuff. You're going to give me half my stuff. We'll trade, trade, trade. Okay, we've completely swapped gear. Okay, now. But yeah, that's not how they intended it. So they said, okay, if you're next to a monster, you can't do it. You can't, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it's just on the turn. Yeah, but, 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 but it's also we just... forgot, and it's just like, yeah, it didn't break the game. We just forgot. Yeah. We were too but... generous. Yeah, but again, you know, and it's but it's really something that for some of these things that has to come down to what's the the dynamic at your particular table, right? Like like I said earlier, you know, I play with a lot of adults who have very competent sort of strategic minds. They're very capable of looking at a game and being like, "This is how I can break it," yeah. right? So I wrote my own rule on weapons. I was like, "You get two weapons basically per quest. You have to decide before the quest begins." Lone wolf, yeah. And it's like you switch, you sw you decide which weapon you have equipped at the beginning of your turn, and you can't switch until your next turn. Yeah. And it's sort of like just because like the... again, you know, my problem tends to be that the heroes get too strong, and so it's like okay, I, I'm going to make it so you can't, you literally just cannot go into a quest as a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, like you know, you can't be. I've got a battle axe and a long sword and a crossbow, and you know, and some artifact that you know. It's like no, 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 like. You, you got to choose a couple of them. Yeah. I don't mind the fact that people are loaded down, but I, I do try to yeah implement the beginning of your turn rule for the ones that do make a difference if you combine them, like the battle axe and the shield. And right. The it's, yeah. You, you don't want the, I swing my battle axe, then I put my battle axe away before the end of my turn. And quickly switch and back put, to the put shield. Put my shield on. When <laughs> right. It's time to defend, and then when it's time to attack, I immediately switch back again. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, then why is there a restriction? There isn't one. Right, yeah. yeah. But maybe you don't care. Yeah. You're like, well, in history, people use battle axes and shields all the time, so I just won't even yeah. do that, and I won't slow you down with the plate mail and all this other stuff. Like, yeah, you can do that, too. Okay. I mean, but this is where we talked about compromises, right? <laughs> compromises, like, yeah. You know, plate mail... Realism, right? If, if, if you were, Yeah, if you were going for realism, plate mail would actually be less encumbering than, a, than like, full-body chain mail. It distributes the weight more evenly, well, but and it doesn't just all fall on your shoulders. Who says it's full body, though? You know. Well, but you know what I mean, like, right? Like the idea that the, there's full an idea drawing. that game systems have tended to perpetuate that, like, as armor gets more protective, it also gets more encumbering and more 
just and like, heavier, and that's not actually true. Right. Just like the the bigger and stronger guy has to be weaker at magic. Like, why couldn't you have <laughs> he he why studied you magic have a, school yeah. and he learned how to use a sword? Like, oh, right. why does the wizard and, have to be a wimp when it comes to combat? Why can't you know? Yeah, you know, like, but, they, they but it's one of those things mechanic things for balance. So you're making choices, right? Trade you're trying to say, oh, okay. right? You're trying to say there's a reason, advantage. right? There's a reason to use chain mail. There's a reason to use plate mail. Yeah. Like I would and have no just... problem. Yeah, I'd have no problem. Like I've never done this, but having like a solo quest where you've got all the powers of a barbarian and a wizard. That could be fun. Yeah, it's like okay, I've used up all my magic. Eh, let me try like splitting a few heads with my axe now. Like okay. Sure, why not? But yeah, in a group, you're like, well, okay, we want each person to have advantages and disadvantages, and they're working together. Like, whenever whenever a discussion of a, a hero comes up, people are always like, oh, this guy's too powerful. It's like, or he's too weak. It's like, yeah, but he's not on his own most of the time. He's going to be with other people. Yeah, he's so working in a team. Now it's the choice of like, well, when we get the party together, are we going to combine the bard with the druid, or the knight with the barbarian, and the, you know, whatever. So... All right, <laughs> I'm never gonna get through these comments if I don't get to them. So yeah, sorry. There was, there was a there was a pretty big backlog that was just I think discussing that. Yeah, let me let me go through with, these. With some of Hasbro's companies have been. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, less of my own commentary because I think we're kind of getting to the end of our uh, show here, but it's been Probably. a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, okay, so Joe Kozier, da da da. A lot of discussion of distribution. Yeah. Decisions. Okay, okay. Stormwolf says bought a few. I gotta pin this message. Oh, he's saying he, he bought from the the place that has the the listing. Oh, the storm. Yeah, the um, firestorm game. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, other people done that. Yeah, I have no. Again, I have no reason to doubt that this isn't one hundred percent true, to the best of their knowledge. I mean, that date is. Uh, March 31st is subject to change, but I think I'm it's, sure probably, it's subject to change. It's yeah. probably pretty close. I mean, the other one was just two weeks off. So, okay. Uh, Elvira says Hasbro does a lot of limited and exclusive stuff. Maybe it's just corporate stuff and they expect from their smaller companies. Yeah. It seems like Avalon Hills had to work against that their entire time. Like they've had to learn themselves and teach their parent company that HeroQuest is not that. HeroQuest is not an exclusive thing. Whereas yeah, pe people people don't want limited time collectible. Yeah, I want a super things. expensive. Yeah, there's only a hundred copies of Keller's Keep, and it's like super elite, and I'm gonna bid on it and get it. Yeah, that was just to get the whole program started. The backlash from the Guardian Knights, it was just too much. So I think they figured it out, and I'm glad because I would hate to have to like crowdfund like every single one of these. And be worried, like, oh, I missed out on it. Dang it! Well, I'll I'll, try, I'll, I'll be sure to pre-order so I get the next expansion because I missed the last one. It's like, yep. oh, my friends, hey, let's play Frozen Horror. I don't have that one. I I missed out on it. Oh, dang it! Like, oh, well, you can get it on eBay for double the price. It's like, eh. Yeah. So I think they're on the right track. Um, but yeah, they've had to work against this other corporate model that Hasbro's been using for years. Vorticon says, as far as Wizards of the Coast goes, uh, Watsy. They are dropping distributors such as Random House Books by cutting out the middleman. Hasbro can get more returns on their product. Avalon Hill is under the Hasbro umbrella and thus pushing back release dates on HeroQuest products allows the company to reap early profits. Ah. Yeah, so there's Maybe. a lot of people who want to buy stuff yeah. day one. I mean, I don't care if I buy it from Hasbro Pulse or Amazon. I'm just going to get the one that gets me the fastest at the lowest price. That's all I care about. Yep. Now, where it does right. matter is people in certain countries who maybe don't have access to certain stuff. If it stops them from getting it, I think that sucks for them. Yeah, that, that's not I ideal. Mean, as long as they get it is is kind of the other thing. It's like, oh man, I had to wait two months to get it. Well, I still got it, as opposed to oh, you just your country never gets. I it. mean, yeah. There's also like, right, like I haven't even started my new play group. Right? How many months is it going to even take us to get to? whatever the next expansion is you know? yeah. well i'm in i'm in no hurry because i mean i'm doing two expansions at once and it took us almost a year to do frozen horror and i think maybe yeah. the mirror will take just as long so i'll be doing quests for the next like 10 years at this rate yeah well i really or i'll uh, take a break i mean maybe i won't play them all but it's good to know that i can just keep playing it as long as i want to and when i'm 
no longer doing this. Somebody else will be doing it. You know, 10 other people, 100 people will be doing it. That's fine. It's great. Yeah, Ideally, something I'd actually be curious to know, though, is like how much of the customer base has actually chewed through all of the content prior to the next release coming out. Yeah, because I hear about people like, oh, yeah, we, we, we sat down for one week and we played through it. It's like, dang, you did it that quick? How the heck did you do it? And sometimes, like, I guess, oh, they're using I guess they didn't go. Rules. They, didn't, they, they didn't played for else. a week straight, and they didn't go to work. Yeah, they didn't do anything else. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I I work a job. I've got other stuff that I try to do in between. I'm not, despite what you see on the streams, I'm not living, breathing, you know, dreaming about HeroQuest every second of every day. Like I I do other things, but yeah, maybe I could, or maybe if I was ten years old again and had you know <laughs> the summer off and just like let's just knock this out, let's do it. Let's get the next one. You know, I've run out of adventures. Yeah, I'm not going to run out of adventures anytime soon. Well, plus I want to experience it with other people too. It's like some of these adventures I'm not that excited about, but the fact that there's other people that want to play it too, like we'll get together and it'll be something more than yeah. if it were just me tapping away on the app. I mean, eh, it's kind of boring. Okay, Elviler says, oh no, sorry, Wordicon. Uh, Wizards is yeah. now going to sell their books on their site and D&D &D Beyond. Yeah. I have nothing invested in that, but I am kind of following that news as well. And I'm kind of tentative about it because it's like, okay, are they making the right decision for them or are they doing the right decision for their customers? They're making things harder for their customers. And that sucks. And so yeah. th they, get the, they're, they're... they get the finger for that one. <laughs> yeah, they're cutting some of the legs out from under See, people who like to you know patronize yeah. Yeah, cuz maybe they're, they're I, trying they're trying to drive their customers or yeah. herd them into their ecosystem because right. they think they can monetize them but better that way. Small shop owners like are they going to be yeah, penalized for this new system and they're going to go out of business and you lose that that cultural experience that you were having. Yeah, that that kind of sucks. Okay. Uh Elvira says they may be at risk of oversaturating the market with HeroQuest. It's possible. I was looking at uh, that game that um, Strange Bus mentioned, Imperial Assault. It was like there was 14 expansions in five years. I was like, dang, that's a lot. But then I was thinking, that's like almost three expansions a year. That's pretty similar to what HeroQuest is doing. Um, say, so Alviler continues, they've got a lot of releases in a short amount of time. So if they're planning on releasing Crypt or Perpetual Darkness, it may not happen for a while. Well, yeah, they would give themselves more time to figure out whatever they need to figure out if if that's what it is if it isn't just a case of no it's just not going to happen we shook on it and that's it Wordicon says so hasbro pulse may be the only way to get hero quest in the future i think they're testing the waters and profit margins i don't think that's true i think they'll always be but you're talking about new products possibly because yeah people will sell stuff on ebay and amazon forever until those companies go under but yeah, if they release a new product and say, okay, you can only buy this on our website until somebody else puts it in the aftermarket, that would kind of suck because then they could fix the prices a lot easier. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, he also says, meaning Amazon may get pushed back on future releases so that Hasbro can get a direct cut first. It's quite possible. I mean, I might just wait to buy it until I can get it somewhere else. I haven't decided yet, me personally. Storm and Wolf says Amazon is the main sales channel for Hasbro regarding D and D magic gathering board games. Yeah. They have their own special section and what they do cut out is publishers between them and the stores and them and the customers don't underestimate the cost running logistics from B to C that is a nightmare and very costly. Well, see, they told, they told us that it doesn't make much difference to them, whether you buy it from Amazon or Walmart or direct from Hasbro pulse. That's what Avalon Hill said. Now, maybe there's somebody else in the company with more authority that disagrees with that, but that's what they said. I mean, it feels like that's hard. Like, that can't be true, right? Like, they... If I wanted to buy Dread Moon from Hasbro, Hasbro Pulse... You're kind of far away there, Carnegie. I'm sorry, I forgot to reposition my mic. See, um, now, now you're probably drowning me out. See, in the recording, yeah. like, it always is like... I'm like talking like that. And it's like, ah! yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. Right. Sorry. I had, I had uh, rolled my mic up. No. So it was up above my head. <laughs> it once, couldn't hear me. Cause it's supposed to be in front of my face. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up. So go ahead. Say yeah. Yeah. Um, I was saying that it, 
The thing is, though, that that feels like it's impossible for that to be true, right? Because they're going to make more money if Dread, they sell it directly. Dread Moon is $45 on Hasbro Pulse, plus shipping. Yeah. Amazon, I bought it on sale on Amazon for like 30, 38 bucks or something with free shipping via Prime. So, like, yeah. Amazon isn't, presumably, isn't making a loss on that. So whatever the wholesale acquisition cost of the product was, well, don't they like buy Amazon is selling it for less money than Hasbro is. So how can their cut be the same? I don't know. It, it, it It's just the numbers don't add up when they say it doesn't make a difference. Like, like maybe it doesn't make well, a difference to the Avalon the Hill Do they lower the employees. But... They lower the price because it's not selling. So they're either going to have to throw this in the trash or send it back. Or they lower the price and they get a sale. Like, is that how it works? I don't know. But I mean, why would... So, I yeah, Hasbro Pulse never lowers the prices. They only increase them. But right. All these other it never goes on sale. Lower them. Yeah. And they charge for shipping. Yeah. And I don't know... Yeah, I, I, I don't know how it all works. I really don't. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like it's physically but, possible for that had, to be true. But, but, but I do want to say this. You did have fans, I think it was in our Discord, possibly in the Avalon Hill Discord as well, who were saying, oh... I vow to buy it direct from Hasbro Pulse. I will not buy from Amazon or Walmart because I want to make sure they get every every bit of that price because I want to support Avalon Hill. And their response was, doesn't matter to us. You don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's it's... the context that it was in, is people were worried right. that somehow if they bought it from like Target that – like it was not going to count and Avalon Hill was not going to get the money and hero quest was in danger. And it's like, they're like, nah. So if there is a difference, it must be negligible. I think, I think it's, it's not a difference that I would imagine makes a difference from the standpoint of like, is the product line viable? I guess what I mean though, is from a standpoint of is, is Hasbro, pushing them to say we need to adopt policies that capture more of the profit directly yeah. for ourselves that's right. where i'm like that's where i'm kind of like no i think that is where it does make a difference like any sale is a good sale but yeah. a sale direct through hasbro pulse just feels like it has to make them more money than a sale through amazon but we don't know the numbers i mean there is no. some information like how many do they sell on Amazon versus Hasbro Pulse? Maybe Who knows? Hasbro, maybe the direct sales on Hasbro Pulse are very small. What if that's the case? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Maybe they don't have a lot on hand. Like if they had to, it would just sell out immediately. Like some things are sold out right now on Hasbro Pulse right. that you can find other places. Why is that true? Yep. It just is. So, right. yeah. And I, and I doubt that... Um, <laughs> the magic hand stream thanks elberg yeah um i don't i think they choose their words very carefully i mean i'm sure they probably had a meeting if somebody said the wrong thing but as someone who works for a big company i know that like if i say something that's completely against company policy that looks bad on me and if my bosses see me doing that i'm getting in trouble so i think they would only say something if they knew that it was accurate and they wanted us to get the right thing. Or they would correct it and say, no, 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 I know I said that, but I want you to buy only from Hasbro Pulse. <laughs> you know? So they haven't said that. But what they did was made the decision for us and said, Hasbro Pulse for two months, and then after that, other stores get it. It's like, okay. I don't think that was a decision they made. I think that was that was imposed upon them. So yeah, Albert could says, be. Yeah, because, I mean, they'll defend the company they work for because they're not going to talk against it. But at the same time, it's like you can tell sometimes it's like there's something that they wanted to do, but they couldn't. They weren't allowed. Um, Elberg says the optimist in me would. Why can't I see that? Oh, here we go. Wonders. Wonders <laughs> if it's, yeah, it's like there's icons in the way. Wonder if there's a limited amount they could get to release for the first wave of shipment. It's a tight schedule right before Christmas, and the next wave will be out as normal to retailers. Magic hand stream, yeah. Um, some people pay a lot of money to see that. It's like, listen, I don't want to be any part of that. Elberg says a lot of rule intention questions, though, are to answer the issues that come live at the table. My friends and I are rules lawyers, so having arbitration to know the intended results often a good value. 
players seeking those answers. See, even Stephen Baker agrees with my interpretation. You can argue with that. And it's like, yeah, I get that. But I try to try to just, it's like, listen, I'm making the call. When you're Zargon, you do it the way you want to. If there weren't disagreements at the table, everyone would play just fine. Agreed. El Viler says, Zargon gets overruled with my family at the table all the time. It's a necessary evil for us. They, they're already reluctant to play. They don't want them to quit. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. You can't kill them too hard. Elbert, forums and Discord and 30 years of disagreements on rulebook has also necessitated the want for clarification after such a long time. Okay, so Alberg is thinking this is not just brand new players confused about the rules. This is people who want to settle those old scores. <laughs> yeah, and it, it'll never end, though. I mean, I told Avalon Bill to his face, his virtual face, that he was wrong about courage, and I stand by it. And he came back, his answer was to say, ah, do it the way you want to. <laughs> good, good on him. Uh, a lot of patience, that guy. Okay, Elverg says, yeah. fun is greater than rules, for sure. Elviler. Bohemia says, Verg, never o- overrules Argon, unless you want to go to the pain pit. No, no, I said that. But you can discuss the home rule and staple it to be consistent. Elviler says, playing with adults, Zargon's word is law. 100%. At least with the adults, they <laughs> won't get tears all over the board and then decide to never play again. Well, I'm going to disagree a little bit. Because I know adults that are like that. That'll maybe they won't have a hissy fit at the table, but the next time you say, "Hey, let's play some Hero Quest," eh. they'll be busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, I just remembered. I got a thing. Well, how about Risk? Oh, you know what? I got the thing done. Ah, but you, I gotcha. Elver says, "Kurgan, you're gonna uh, give that store owner a call." I did. Oh, I forgot to say that. So I called both of those stores. So Viking Hobby in California and Isle of Games or Isle of Gaming. Oh, I've already forgot. In Arizona. I called both of them and they just said, we don't have any new information since last time. We'll we'll put you on the list and give you a call when Ogre Horde becomes available. And I said, what about March 31st? Oh, they haven't told us that. (laughs) So that doesn't mean the UK page is wrong. That just means they haven't been told that. So no new info. I tried. Good idea. Yeah. Bohemia says, Verg, if tour family don't want to play, invite me. I'll play with you. <laughs> uh, Verg says, Bohemia, if you end up sacrificing the player's fun and not account for things that aren't fun for your players, you won't continue to have those players. That's true. These game spaces that Zargon rules always applies, but there's also space that needs to be malleable to keep players engaged and wishing to continue to play. Well, there's also the fact, I just want to throw this in. Um, that sometimes the players don't know what's good for them. Like they think, oh yeah, we need more of this. But you know that later in the quest, they're going to need this other thing. And so you just go, okay, fine. You can have that thing that you wanted. But now don't you wish you had this other thing? Like, so they may think they know what's best and yeah, they want it to be easy, but yeah, you, you just have to like learn your audience. And sometimes, yes, you, sometimes you do make concessions because you really don't want to lose that one player, so you bend to their will, <laughs> or you let the little kid. Okay, fine, little kid. You you, you can you can try again, you know, <laughs> because you're still learning to be a good sport. Yeah, we're human. At the end of the day, you, you still have to kind of feel things out. It's not going to go perfect every time. Um, Bohemia says yes. That is what I mean. Discuss the rules once to accommodate the need and opinion of everyone. After everyone agree, write the rule and don't change it to avoid future discussions. Yeah. You kind of got to put your foot down as Zargon. Um, Elverg says, I believe you meant Elviler. <laughs> See, now I'm commenting on the conversation. I don't play with my family brother when we were younger, but not now. I like these conversations. Maybe I don't need to recite this all for the, the group. Let me just go through. Yeah, we might be able to skip a little bit. Wardcon's playing solo with the app. Only four quests in. See, if if, if they look at my data for the app, it's going to be weird. Because I'm mostly just trying to break it. Like, I'm trying to do weird (laughs) stuff just to see how they would handle it, you know? And sometimes I'm, like, answering questions like, well, you can't search for treasure in the corridor. It's like, yes, you can. They put it in there. (laughs) They, They accounted for that finally. They fixed it. Because there's two quests uh, where there's a treasure chest in a corridor because it's a room. It's treated as a room. 
Um, Elberg says, I think the game rules can be malleable at any stage if the need arises. I, I agree with that. Not worth tanking the group's fun if something comes up later after rules are established just for the sake of doing so. Not worth the time spent. Don't underestimate the costs of warehousing and picking. Oh, back to the Amazon. Amazon makes very little per product. Yeah, but they have sell so many products. Yep, it's the accumulation. Uh, talking about food discounts. See, I'm not an economist. I, I don't know this stuff. I, I do not feel competent to comment on whether this is right or wrong. Amazon. Yeah, more talking about Amazon. Oh, <laughs> Wordicon. <laughs> the X-Files theme is playing in his head. The conspiracy. Oh, Verg is asking if I'm going to call Firestorm Games. Yes, yes. Um, well, they're asleep right now, I think. Or no, they're just getting up. Yeah, I'll call them, I'll call them in the afternoon. How about that? If they've got a phone number, you can call the UK. Thanks, Ferg. My daughter's middle name is Fox, after all. Thanks, Vorticon. Okay. Well, guys, uh, it's been a good discussion. I even talked Carnegie under the table. I didn't think I could do it, but you hear how quiet he is. Um, <laughs> still awake? Yep, I'm still here. I mean, usually you and I are just like back and forth, like... Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> the rant cast i'm starting to lose my voice too so we spent all this time talking about against the ogre horde we don't know any more now than we did at the start the only thing is we're getting more of a ballpark date a little bit more of a confirmation that it's probably going to be the bigger more expensive box and i mean i, I would say yeah i mean we don't know anything about the official release really but i think we did we did learn something from the commentary over the course of this rant cast about, you know, what was different marketplaces awareness and knowledge, right, back in the day. Right, we kind of got confirmation that these things were just about unknown in the U.S. and not that's universally not adopt adopted well no you know no, like in the er, in the early 90s when they were on sto in stores right like nobody in the US was getting their hands on o ogre horde in 1992 yeah that, that's not that's not news though i we've known that for I mean, years the 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 exception and i'm not saying that to be a jerk but the exception was you did have people we, we all know people like this. They, they go to the friendly local game shop and they've got an import section. Oh, here's this weird European game you can buy. Mm. It's really expensive. Right. Or dad came home from a business trip and he brought a copy of the game. It's like, that was the exception. But you did have people where, like, I care. Like, he only remembered the European version. He's not British. He's an American. So, but, but mm. that's the exception. So, yes, nobody people not knowing about these other regions. Like I didn't know the Japanese version existed until a couple years ago. I was like, wow, where was this? I mean, it was there the whole time. I just didn't know about it. But that just means that if you wanted to release it, you're going to have to like educate everybody about it. And maybe you're not going to have as many people mad if you know, you got something wrong unless you are releasing it in Japan. And then people are going to be like, well, I do remember that and you're getting it wrong. <laughs> So, but I think, I think overall, just, just the idea of them bringing back something from the past has a little bit of mystique to it, even if it's not something we never had. So just like those Europeans are happy to get Frozen Horror, even though they never had it, you know, they just found out about it last week, you know, from the internet, just the idea that it was from that time period, that it's something that they could have had, even though there really wasn't an opportunity where they were like they would have had to import it. I think adds to it versus if it's something completely new, but the completely mm -hmm. new packs have a mystique about them too. Cause it's like, Oh, I want to see what they're, what something new is coming about. So they're, they're both, they both have their own appeal. So I don't think they're in any kind of trouble with giving us the ogre horde. And I don't think that's going to diminish any future projects that they're doing. Yes, they have a small crew, but I think they have a pretty good handle on 
They're giving us new content. They're giving us legacy content, new content, legacy, in whatever order they want. And I think it's going to be fine. And the fact that we have very good reason to believe that there's going to be new content in this that didn't exist before is kind of incorporating both of those together. So yeah, there's going to be something familiar, but there's going to be something added. So there's a little something yep. for everybody. And it's not just going to be, well, I didn't like this pack, so there's nothing in it for me. Or I already own it, so there's no reason to buy it. You know? Or, well, I want I mean, something my, new. Eh. My copy of it is a reproduction. Yeah. I don't own the legitimate manufacturer's copy yeah. like you do. Well, it's hard. It, go to Board Game Geek. I got this from a guy in the UK. Really cool guy. And yeah. I, I told him, you realize you could make like way more if you sold this on eBay. Like, the price you're offering me is absurdly low. He wanted to sell. I was like, oh, man, I hope he's not like dying of cancer or something. I mean, he didn't say that. But it was just like, I was like, wow. I was like touched. I'm like, but he had this attitude of like, okay, it's to a good home. Like, I know you're like a really hardcore fan. I want to sell it to you versus just some random person who may just I mean, resell it again right after. It's like. Yeah, so, never underestimate that sentiment. I think yeah, there's a certain amount of like that, that and why we why we got the house that we got. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> you know? Nice. Right? It was like they didn't they didn't want to just sell it to a flipper. They wanted to sell it to somebody that was gonna care Family, for the house like they cared for it. They're gonna love it. Like it's gonna be loved yeah. just like it was. Yeah, it's it's a home. That's that's great. And I actually I did print this out myself. I have a, like a printed version from Yield In. But mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, wow, I actually get a chance to own it. So, but eventually everybody's going to get to, and that's great. That's yeah. spread the love around. Well, I mean, I'm just noting, right? Like this is, it's, there's, you know, there's, there's different, different shades of, I already have it, right? Like yeah, I have it, but it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. reproduction minis and home printed tiles and. It's, it's almost, it's almost fun, more fun to do that. I mean, I think I spend, so if I had bought these off of eBay, I would have spent the most money and I didn't want to do that. Recreating them, buying like Reaper bones and printing stuff was pretty expensive, but not as expensive no. as that. But it'll be even cheaper to have waited several years and then bought the remake version, which has different art and everything. But yeah, if you just want yeah, to play and I think, it, and, it's more affordable. And I think there's, yeah, there's also just an allure to having it be like pristine, right? Because yeah. you know, buying a, a used copy of Ogre Horde that's legit is one thing. I don't mind buying it. one that's like still sealed in the box with the shrink wrap on it would yeah. be a whole other thing. And it's like now I get to get, you know, all the pieces are in yeah. you know new from box shape, and I can sleeve the cards as soon as they come out of the box, and blah yeah. blah blah. You know, I can take care of it in a way that I didn't know how to do when I was a kid. When I was ten, yeah. Well, and, and the same, yeah. by the same token, like, I don't mind if this gets beat up. I'm not trying to abuse it, but I don't mind if this gets beat up versus, like, this. I'm going to be much more gentle with this. Yeah. But, yeah. Even though that's actually easier to <laughs> to replace. <laughs> what? The, this? Yeah. How? Or may maybe, the, maybe the video was out of sync. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so, on the right is the Mage of the Mirror one that I just spray painted. On the left yeah. is the original, uh, right against the ogre horde. This is harder to get. Yeah, on the left, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be more gentle with this than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I'm not trying to like trash it. Right. Yeah. But also, I mean, the, the softer plastic is also a little less prone to breaking. Yeah. Just... You know, the hard plastic is the, the problem with it is that but it's if it's subjected to a lot of stress, it snaps. Yeah, definitely. Does. Yeah, styrene, and these resin three right. D prints. I mean, they're they're yeah. still pretty. Bright. Yeah, I mean, they're I mean, you you got the twisty arm. Mine, painting. my reproductions are so old that you know three D printing wasn't even a glimmer in anybody's eye yet. Um, mine were injection molded by someone who like you know reverse engineered the molds out of See, getting you know somebody durable. sent them the yeah. well, but the plastic the quality of the plastic isn't that good lobby yeah i think i saw you that. know I almost... it's got it's 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 kind of it's pockmarked kind of like the, there's oh, just like yeah. you know it, it just it didn't fill out the mold with perfect clarity mm -hmm. 
the way that the ones from the manufacturer do. See, but Avalon um, sees this. They see how desperate people are to get this stuff. Yeah. They're like, listen. <laughs> I mean, this was like Alec twenty. You point. know, this was like twenty years ago. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. You know, A so lot of this stuff. Um, I I didn't really get involved until maybe like. Yeah. I I think my first post was like 2019 on Yield In. But it's right. probably like 2016 that I really started like, okay, I'm going to collect all these and like print them out and I'm going to start painting stuff. Like I was serious. Whereas before that, I was just kind of like, oh, I wonder what people on the internet are doing with HeroQuest. Oh, a lot of stuff. Okay, that's nice. Go back but to yeah, so with the reproduction, the, you, know, the, the, you know, the kind of quality variation in the reproductions for the multi-part minis, I had to glue most of them, you know, like. Yeah the the like peg fit. and slot systems don't well. don't have grip well, I'm not gonna so take it's the like whole thing apart but yeah 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 but you know what i mean like i had to it was like okay the body just falls apart it doesn't you know you, the two halves don't like snap into place the way they're supposed to so they're still perfectly functional and at mm -hmm. some point originally i planned on painting them but i never got around to it but you know it's like i'm painting my resin I'm painting the resin, yeah. and I'm I'm keeping yeah, the, the paint the, off. The, the resin, the resin stuff is much nicer than the stuff that that I've got for the new one is much nicer than the but, stuff from but, the old one. Well, it's funny because I'm painting the stuff thinking it'll look better on the stream, but now it's more like I'm just painting it for display almost. So I'm painting these guys, and it's like, okay, these will just be like for display, and I have those yeah. 3D printed ones that Mercantile gave me that I can use on the stream because you can see the colors like well enough. Uh, they look pretty decent. It's like, okay, good enough color prints. Okay. Well, thanks everybody on the rant cast here. I'm sorry. We didn't get to star Wars, star Trek. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to just quickly say my opinion about it. We're not going to talk for two more hours, even though that'd be fun. Um, my opinion of star Wars, if you didn't know, is that I really like the original trilogy. And I kind of fell out of love with the special editions. So I like the original versions. Return of the Jedi, though, has the most nostalgia for me because it was the first one I remember seeing, even though I actually have memories of the Greedo scene from the first movie. So technically, I did actually see that before. I think it was a, like a marathon, like a triple oh. bill. And we went to dinner, and so I missed Empire Strikes Back when I was eight or whatever. Uh, no, I guess it would have been six. Yeah. But anyway, I have a lot of love for Return of the Jedi, even though I know it has some flaws and a lot of people were disappointed at the time. I can appreciate the first two movies a lot more now. With the prequels, I was disappointed by episode one, but I've kind of just learned to accept it. Episode two, I actually liked a lot. Episode three, I liked a lot as well. Not as much as the original trilogy, but that's my opinion with star wars a lot of the expanded universe i liked the comics i liked a lot of the games the novels i haven't read as many as i thought i had there's actually a lot that i haven't read but the ones i read at the time i mean they were fine i don't know if they would have made good movies but with not the, all not all of them yeah with the sequels i did not Some of them. i didn't like the force awakens i didn't like i hated the last jedi that kind of like killed it for me I, I finally watched rise of skywalker and i pretty much agreed with all the criticisms that people made online about it i thought it was kind of just all over the place rogue one i thought was because it popular. was yeah. <laughs> i thought rogue one was fine but it was mostly fine compared to the other ones it wasn't like great in and of itself i felt like it was just kind of forgettable yeah. It's and a fun watch, but it's not like Solo, mandatory viewing. Yeah, Solo was was okay. Like it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. But when I read about like the development hell it went through and all this stuff, and there was definitely some annoying parts. I think the people that said the worst character, the, the character that came out looking the worst was Lando. I agree with that. I think his character was trashed in that movie, and I think it was a farce. <clears throat> um, it wasn't like a crime against humanity or anything, but yeah, it, it was just dumb. And the TV shows, I watched all of Kenobi. I agree with a lot of the criticism people have said about those, saying that it went in a lot of silly directions and it didn't have to be made. And or I watched four episodes and I kind of lost interest. It just it just didn't really grab me. I, that's my rule. Four episodes for a show. And if it doesn't grab me, I just stop watching it. Why waste my time? Ahsoka, haven't seen it at all. 
I laugh at the reviews though people make because it sounds hilarious, but not not so bad it's good that I need to watch it. Is my thought. And I barely watched any of Clone Wars, never saw Rebels. Star Trek, I was doing a project where I was trying to like write uh, a work about like the philosophy and mysticism within the series. So I forced myself to watch all of the shows and all of the movies. It took forever, but I absolutely loved the original series because I grew up watching it on reruns. I'm not that old. Um, I really, really enjoyed The Next Generation because that was a show that I watched as it was airing. Although I do have to laugh because in some of those episodes, Picard is a real like pompous, like self-righteous, like jerk. <laughs> he really is. But if you just look at it one episode at a time, it doesn't matter. It's just when you try to like watch a whole season and you're like, man, he didn't learn anything. <laughs> like, what is this? So, but it's still a pretty good show and it had the higher its viewership. I thought DS9 was very slow. It felt more like a, like a soap opera drama for like those first few seasons. And then they got into the war, uh, the Dominion War, which was kind of interesting, trying to be a war story and a spy story. And I'm told that it's very similar to Babylon 5, but I haven't seen Babylon 5. So maybe after I watch Babylon 5, which I want to do one of these days, I can compare it. But yeah, Deep Space Nine was kind of like back and forth. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad. Voyager started out with some really interesting premises which I felt like they got rid of too quickly. They, they, they gave, just didn't, yeah. They gave up. They didn't follow through. Yeah, they didn't follow through. And there was definitely, like, Janeway was a hateable character because she was all over the place. One episode, she's making a smart decision. The next one, she's being was an idiot. So Sometimes inconsistent. She's, 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 like, really righteous. Other times, she's, like, borderline fascistic. And you're like, what the hell? And I guess you could like, oh, I could kind of imagine, you know, a, a, a captain stranded out, you know, far away from civilization is just going to make rash choices sometimes. OK, but yeah, as a show, it just I didn't look forward to it. Like I was it was it was a chore to watch. Now, the best thing I said, the best thing out of Voyager was the Elite Force video games, which I thought were really fun. It's like putting you in the Star Trek world. But that was just inspiration. Um, Enterprise. I actually started out really, really liking it. But as I was watching Voyager at the same time, like I saw more stuff in Voyager that made me feel like they were recycling ideas and then like it was lessened. And there was a couple of really dumb episodes where I felt like they were pushing like a moral message that was like completely wrong. Like in my personal, you know, because usually I don't, like I can, I can watch a movie and like maybe they have a message that I disagree with like personally but I can still appreciate it as art, like saying, well, I don't agree with what they're saying, but I can still enjoy the experience. Um, but, but there were some that just took me so out of it. I'm like, they're telling me this is the right choice, but it's the opposite. It's like, this makes no sense. It's stupid. The characters are betraying, you know, the character they previously established. So that, that kind of like turned me off of the series. And so I was like reading reviews that were just ripping the show. And I kind of was enjoying that. Like, <laughs> shot and fried about it i guess um and then they had the war angle and in the final season of enterprise they had i think it was manny Cotto was the guy they brought in a new guy who was a super fan who was trying to save the show because the viewership had just plunged into almost nothing and so he was just doing fan service episode after fan service episode and they were a lot of fun but it was too late they knew the show was being canceled and so i think it was kind of like a a sick joke, kind of a, a cruel trick to like put this guy in there and, you know, task him. Oh, and you failed to save the show. Well, isn't that too bad? And then that's the season finally sucked discovery. I watched like three episodes and I just gave up. Like it was boring. The characters were not likable. It didn't feel like it was going anywhere. And even though they're trying to reinvent stuff, it just, I don't know. It just didn't grab me. So my four episode rule gave up. So I guess I didn't even give it four. I gave it three, three and a half. And Picard, I've never seen. From what I've heard is that it's very iconoclastic as far as Star Trek goes. But then they kind of went, a, went against that and then did a whole big fan service finale. So I don't know what to think about that. But I didn't I, watch it either, but that was the I, impression I got. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's just like, I. it just doesn't grab that, me. It's like, yeah. I've got to see... They tried, gotta, like... 
the first two seasons tried to, apparently tried to you know kind of do something different, and then the last season was like, let's just get all the crew back together and have Ooh, them and save I, the day uh, again. Sure. And it's yeah. like these guys are all like seventy, <laughs> you know. This, I mean, I I'm all for having like, I don't know. It's it's they've done this with so many franchises, and this is just my closing thought, is that like if you want to make uh indiana jones and the crystal skull or you want to make a force awakens or you want to make a picard that should be like a fan film that should be something you show at a convention as like a reunion one-off it's not really canon it's just for fun you know as opposed to like no this is going to be like a long-running franchise like nothing ends we're going to shoehorn people in there and it's like we've got to you know get the actor back in and we got to rewrite his character. So he's a grumpy old man. And now he's having more adventures with CGI. And it's like, it just doesn't appeal to me. Like put it in a book, put it in a comic video game, but don't make another movie and try to convince me that it's a true sequel. You know, I don't want to know what Bill and Ted are doing, you know, facing the music or whatever. Like it just doesn't, doesn't appeal. I mean, I'm glad the actor is getting a paycheck, but that's about it. And yeah, I think there's a certain point where continuing to try and they lived happily explore ever after. They a all story died. they all died horribly <laughs> just isn't interesting anymore. Yeah. Yeah, they just you know, you're like, the ground. Right. You're like it, there's not the, the the story you're telling isn't compelling. Like mm-hmm. you exhausted the creative potential of these characters. Yep. And so when people ask me, "Are you a Star Wars fan?" I say, "Yes." But then I feel like I have to explain what I mean by that because I don't want them to think that I'm one of these extremist fanboys, whatever you want to say, fangirls, fan fan persons, uh, who either hate everything and can never be happy, or they love everything and cannot tolerate any criticism. Like I, I just want to say, well, there's some things called Star Wars that I really like, and other stuff I can't be bothered with, and I don't automatically you know, check out the next product because that's always the next question. Oh, you're a Star Wars fan. Have you seen the new show? What do you think of it? Oh, I haven't watched it. Well, why not? I thought you said you were a fan and then I have to explain it. Same thing with Trek. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I consider myself a fan because there's a lot of it that I really enjoy, but maybe now there's just too much of it. That's not of good quality. And so, yeah, in the eighties I could say, yeah, I love everything they've made. But now I can't say that anymore. I could say, well, I just like a small percentage of what they made. I like their earlier stuff. You know, you always hear people say that. But it's not true. I mean, there's newer stuff that I can appreciate. It's just that I don't automatically, like, I don't feel so loyal that I have to, like, pretend to like it if it it doesn't appeal to me. I'm much more, like, detached from it. So last comments here. Thank you guys for (laughs) listening to the rant cast with us here. Uh, next time we'll get Strange Bus in here. We'll talk some more Star Wars for real. Um, so yes, there are some lesser-known versions of Hero Quest that have some interesting differences. The Brazilian version that uses the North American rules, but it's in Portuguese, and it's mostly cardboard. So you have the cardboard figures. Two of the it's the let's see the Sorcerer's Table and the Tomb that are made of cardboard. And the rest are plastic. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. And there is a uh, Hebrew version that is like the first and second edition uh, European rules combined into one. And it's interesting because with that one, like you're reading from right to left instead of left to right. So they like reversed the pages in the quest book, but they reversed the maps too, is what we're finding out. But that the Hebrew version, it's very early. Like his Bazargon is looking at it. So a lot of it, we haven't translated it to see if there's other changes. I don't know the language. So there could be other secrets in there that we don't know about. It's kind of like the Japanese version. A lot of people just assumed, oh, this is just the European version again. It's like, no, most of the quests are different. The artifacts are different. The rules are different. Like almost everything about it is different. But it's still Hero Quest. Like it still has enough of it in there that you go, yeah, this feels like it's the same world. It's just a little, another possibly new adventure. So I'm always excited to learn more things about, yeah, this stuff, even though that wasn't 
that wasn't my hero quest, but it's part of the world's hero quest. Uh, didn't even know about the Dutch version until quite recently and grew up in the Netherlands. And I always forget which one it is, but there's one of them. No, it's the Swedish version, I think, where it's not the Les Edwards painting on the cover. It's just a picture of the board. But the setup that they give is nonsensical. Like, there's no quest that looks like that, and it doesn't even make sense. But you could still, like, we we created quests in Hero Scribe to, like, match what the box layout looked at. It's like, oh, you can make up a quest. There's too many doors. And then Bohemia says, Last Jedi break too many fans. Me included. Yeah, it broke us. Luckily, what I like the most in Star Wars is the universe, the costumes, props, the aliens, planets, and design in general. Yeah. And someday I would like to play the Star Wars uh, D6 RPG and just make up the universe. Like, not feeling beholden to, you know, have like a specific planet in a specific place and a specific history. Just, just make it up. Just like they say to do in Warhammer 40k. Like, you just make it up. <laughs> you can just add to the world. And as long as everybody at the table accepts it, it's cool. Star Wars might be hard because you might have some fans say, well, actually, that's Exegol there. And technically, that alien race wasn't, you know, didn't have that type of ship. And it's like, just shut up. I'm running the campaign. <laughs> when it's your turn, you can do it. But, but you know, it's just, it, that's the fun thing. Because when you're playing at home, you'd be like, oh, I don't have that action figure. No, you just make it up. I know that looks like Superman, but that's actually like, you know, an Aqua Trooper. And he's going to be doing his Aqua Trooper stuff. <laughs> just accept it. <laughs> All right. Closing thought, uh, Carnegie. And then we'll call it. Um... He said it all, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no spell tokens. That's my closing thought. Okay, and I'm and, and, and Amalgamash, Amalgamash is on your side. I think he said no, no token. Yeah, he said no token. Period. He's going big. I'm saying. Well, I, I don't know about that. I'm, I just don't think we're. I think we're going to get cards and not spell yeah. tokens for the spells. I I'd take both, but I hope that something like this is in the box, and I predict that it will be. But we'll see who's right. Yeah. We'll see who's we'll right. Have to see. A lot of people over the years have said that they should have cards, but Rise of the Dread Moon changed my mind that it could be possible. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, Rantcast. All right, thanks, Storm and Wolf. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're, we're done like in minutes here. Played the D6 Star Wars about three years ago. Had a blast. It was a former, I was a former scout trooper turned bounty hunter sniper. Cards plus tokens, <laughs> says Jay Suri. That's right. Well, and whatever we don't get, we're going to make ourselves. So if you don't give us cards, we're going to print cards. If you don't give us tokens, we're going to print tokens. So might as well sell us what you think people will want. And I was going to say one more thing, but I can't remember what it was. So it's probably for the best. Rickcast! <laughs> All right, shout out Carl Casey, White Bat Audio. We'll get his music going again. And we'll see if there's anybody we can raid this time of night all right i'll end the stream here momentarily and we'll get our raid going i mean find somebody on the west coast That's cool. <laughs> it's not that late for them yeah. yeah i got a i got a jet i am yeah. way past my bedtime yeah, we did this without <laughs> a break i'm sorry about that Normally, uh, it's the strange bus. He'll keep me to uh, actually taking a break in between because we don't have. Ads. Oh, it's no, no worries. On the yeah. rantcast, the rantcast. we discussed. <laughs> no token says no to drugs. Yeah, but yeah, I will uh, catch you later. All right, have a great night, Carnegie. Have a good one. Rantcast, yeah.